I wonder if it's going to come to total amount of views again, or if it's going to... Yeah, I think it does that for everyone now. I was watching some other people's shit. All right, we're, we're filling up. Here we go. That's right. All righty, folks. We are back, baby. Wednesday night. It is not ladies' night. That is tomorrow, but it is industry night. But more importantly, hockey night in Scottsdale. Joined, as always, from the couch here, baby. I am Jay Swish, the People's Insider, with Bobby Gucci, the Heat Daddy. Right now, Gucci, we have the Toronto Maple Leafs visiting the Washington Capitals. And just before we launch this, we always come in a little bit late, low and slow, as we would say. Austin Matthews potted, I believe, his 56th of the season. Yeah, I mean, this is a big game for Washington. No one in the East Coast wants to make playoffs. Everybody in the Eastern Conference are all playing like shit. So this is bad for Washington. The last thing you want to do is go down one where every game counts. If they win tonight, I believe they leapfrog the uh, tanking Red Wings who are tanking for uh, – I, I think they're tanking for that Machi Celebrini kid. I don't know how you play that bad all these games in a row, but not a good start for the Capitals. Huge game for them. Yeah, and last night, obviously, Showtime just put his chin on the line for the good city of Detroit, the Motor City, if you will, and got that done in overtime. But, yes, they are free-falling, like we say, as a young Tom Petty. But, anyways, right now, the Toronto Maple Leafs leading the Washington Capitals. That is 1-0. If you're following along in the chat with us over here at Hockey Night in Scottsdale, the alternate cast, the cast you can't get anywhere else, Besides from a fucking coach with a couple assholes, we are at the 1824 marker. Gooch Ovechkin, historically, obviously, he'll get to hopefully Gretzky's record and pass that. But having a, a little bit of an off season, but still the Capitals are in the mixer. I mean, they're right there. They're hanging on. They're tooth and nail. If they get a win like this tonight, and we're looking at a guy like Chucky Lindgren out of Lakeville, Minnesota, their goalie has been keeping in him a lot of games. If they can get a win tonight against the Maple Leafs, I mean, it's do or die, my friend. I have no idea how the Capitals are even in contention. I have no idea how the Islanders are in contention. I know they were on a heater. The Eastern Conference is weird. I personally think that the West is just going to come in, stomp their boots, and beat the crap out of whoever comes out of the East. That's just me. I'm just an asshole on the couch. But, yeah, Swish, I mean, I think, you know, it just sucks because I don't really like watching Washington. Shout out to Connor McMichael and Sonny Milano, though, my boys. But, yeah, I mean – I'm glad we have meaningful games. Like we, I don't want to be watching Nashville and Dallas like on a fucking Tuesday night at five o'clock. I'd rather be watching Washington play for something. Yeah, and it's weird you say that because I, you look at a team like the Washington Capitals, and they're one point out of the final wild card spot in the East. Their first year coach Spencer Carberry comes in. He leads this team to you know a, a decent season to date in terms of you know they're right there with making the playoffs. They've had injuries. They've had a lot of guys out. Nikki Backstrom ultimately couldn't play this season. But the crazy thing about the Capitals is their goal differential is like minus thirty. So it really makes no sense. How these guys are getting wins are they just when they're losing are they getting blown out are they you know winning a lot of tight games probably a mix of both but if you're looking at the eastern conference and you're looking at who's going to make the playoffs don't you think it's like who's just going to take themselves out like who's not going to lose yeah. that much i mean I, I don't know i just don't see any of these teams really going on a, a heater if you will no i mean that's what it seems like i mean you can make a case for the islanders that did that but right now you have teams that really could run away with it like detroit and I don't know what happened if there's no clean drinking water and they're all they all just have a sickness. I don't know if it's issues in the locker room. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I really I don't know if they hired the Blackhawks video coach and that's a distraction. I don't know what they did behind the scenes to make them collapse like this, because let me tell you something, Swish. The city for, of Detroit is hungry for these guys to get in. Yes. So I want them in. I'd rather see them in than. The fucking Capitals, if I'm being honest. Yeah, but. I agree. I, I mean, Motown is a city that needs playoff hockey. It's been a little bit of time. I mean, earlier in the year, Rob, on Hockey Night in Scottsdale, we had the legend three-time cup champion in Darren McCarty. And he just spoke so highly on, you know, the winged wheel, the city of Detroit, the good people of Michigan. I mean, when you're thinking about historic franchises, aside from them being an original six team, I mean, that place, Little Caesars Arena, they have yet to see playoff hockey at that new bar. Crazy. So it's like if they can get there, get this thing going, we're looking at a former Red Wing right now in Tyler Burt Bertuzzi. But, yeah, we'll see. It can Showtime will their way in. I'm not sure what's going on inside that locker room. Our guys, their, their chicks not whacking them enough. 
We will monitor that situation. But a guy like Poppy, I mean, he's got 15, 16 odd games to play, Rob. Don't count him out yet, but I really hope he can get to 70 goals, my what, friend. What's he at right now? I think he's at 56 unless he tucked last night. So I think he's at 56. Confirmed. Oh, someone just got buried. But uh, hey, it was Bobby McFerrin. Guys, fire up the chat. Where are you from? Are you watching the game with us? Questions, comments, concerns? This chat's a little slow. I'm not going to lie. Get the chat fired up. We need you guys. We have the first commercial break in like four minutes here. Oh, my chin. Somebody oh, just. Oh, my staples. That was easy. But, yeah, load that chat up. Let's get going in here, folks. I know this is a national televised game on TNT, but that doesn't matter because you're watching along with the boys at Hockey Night. Again, like we always say, Rob, over here, if you're watching along, you're in tuning into the action. Get a picture, send it to us. If you're watching us on you know one screen, maybe it's a laptop, an iPad, and you got the game going at the same time. We want to see where you guys are tapping in from in terms of watching this game, watching the cast with us. So we got about 1550 left remaining here in the first frame. We're just getting going. But fellas, if there's any ladies in here, load up the chat. We got our show in Buffalo next week, yeah. next Saturday. That is the 30th of March. So if you're in the greater Toronto area. If you're in southern Ontario, come over the goddamn border. Come over the goddamn border. Come hang out with us at the rec room. We'll be live there from about 4 to 6 p.m. right before the game. And then probably afterwards, we'll be going back there. So please, if you're in that area, come fucking mix it up with the boys. Yeah, I mean, it's a perfect place to come drink, hang out. There's some entertainment. I mean, I, every time we've had a show, we've been out of pocket. It's been out of control. Everyone has seemed to enjoy it. So... If you're in the Buffalo, Toronto area, come down to the goddamn fucking rec room before the goddamn game. Yeah, come hang out with the fellas. Like, let's get this thing going. Let's get it buzzing. It's going to be a hell of a time. Obviously, it's Maple Leafs. They're in town. They're playing the Buffalo Sabres, another team trying to make the playoffs. They're getting willed in from that trade in terms of a guy like Bo Byram being inserted in the lineup, playing on that number one power play. He looks really crispy rice up there. Paige Thompson is heating up TNT Thompson. So you never know with the Donnie Granado, Donnie Meatballs, and those guys in Buffalo getting buzzed. But, hey, right now we're back to Washington, D.C., one of the murder capitals of the world, honestly. It's sneaky. Like, it's sneaky. Like, you could sneaky get your chin shot really quick right by the Lincoln Memorial. So that is a city you always have to keep it tucked. Not only to mention a ton of other cities, but Fight Strap on, as always, in D.C. That's actually a really nice barn there Ooh. at the Verizon Center, mind you, too. Yeah, I actually, uh, I went there solo one time. And I just want to say for everyone that's watching, I'm going to be looking at my phone a little bit more today. I have a partnership with Mountain Dew, and I have to post something in about 15 minutes. So I just want to make sure that my obligations are fulfilled anyway. Yeah, Swish, I lived in D.C. for about two months when I played for this retarded-ass team. Everyone was addicted to heroin. Uh, most of the guys on the heroin, team. Heroin, good buzz. Yeah, yeah, great buzz. Most of the guys on the team had kids. And, uh, you know, my roommate sucked ass. So I actually went to the Verizon Center by myself one night to catch a game. And solo I was, mission. Yeah, solo mission. It was actually one of my first times I ever went to a game alone. Actually, it might be the only time. And uh, I really was pleasantly surprised because outside the arena, you know, there was gunshots, guys getting hit by motorcycles, guys getting hit while they're on motorcycles. So great arena. We have a one nothing game. 1328 remaining. For yeah, a hell of a facility there. And nothing wrong with a solo mission, especially if you're a little buzz too. I mean, it's kind of like golfing like with yourself. You know, you can you can kind of make up the score. You can make up the rules. You can tell people, you know, you're, you're with people, but you're really not. You're just hanging amongst a lot of different people that you don't happen to know. Anyways, back to the game right now. 1308 on the chin as Jake McCabe gets taken to the boards by Abe Kubel. And they're not able to round the puck as Nick Dowd picks it up and he chips that thing in and he goes and finds it as Abe Kubel down. Nice hit. Nice Barrels four down on Morgan Riley. Morgan Riley, as you know, took that five or six game suspension a little bit earlier in the year against Riley Gregg. I love that play. Shouldn't have been a suspension. If you're me, that's the best 50000 bucks he spent per day, I think. How much was that fine, man? It was, it was up there. It yeah. Because cool the fine and then you forfeit all the salary. He makes seven bananas. So that's got to be, I mean, he had to forfeit like probably 200K for that thing. Yeah, man. that's going to be a, uh, that is a lot know, of, that's going to be an Aston Martin coupe. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're looking at your girl and you're like, you know, you're you're not getting the Birkin bag this year. Yeah. You know, you're not getting maybe the new, you know, lit, I don't know, you got the Land Rover, or if it's the Lincoln Navigator, whatever she wants, the Escalade, or maybe it's like the, the Maybach. So. Yeah, and if she has a problem with it, then go back to your ex then. Right, go back, go back to your ex. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you're going to have side action too. That's all in the per diem pack, but we're getting a live look at Ovi throwing the body. Oh, my that's God. from behind, Johnny arguably. Harris. Johnny Tavares, talk about a guy that's low and slow. He's slowing down a little bit. I think he's drinking a little bit too much kombucha. Oh, that's a goal. 
Oh my, oh my god. god. Did that go Tristan Jari out? Did that go that East West out? Day. Full 40. How sick I is thought it? it went over the net. We have the crazy brightness going on. Yeah, here. No, I don't know what I, I thought that hit the post, but I'm also wearing Did shades it? and I can't really see right now. But you know how sick OB like what an athlete that guy is. He's an amazing soccer player, too, Gooch. Yeah, it is crazy. Like how thick is that? He's like 250 pounds and he's like light, he's got light feet. That just doesn't make sense. He's just one of those freaks, you he's know. Like James like he, Harrison. You, you just grow up and you see guys like that, and you can train all you want, but you, you can never get to no. a guy like Ovechkin's better. He's just a freak. And I don't know if uh you know he was roided up or substances uh he was taken as a kid, but no, he he's an it's an honor to watch him. And honestly, it's kind of sad that he's almost done. I mean, fuck so, holy. Dumb. Who got ab absolutely absolutely physical? Who got absolutely dump trucked? I mean, the Washington Capitals. Oh my God! That was almost your Sunny Magic hands, Milano. Oh my God! He's got to know that Wall's got a quick chest there. I got to tell people in the chat. I was gonna put seven hundred dollars on Sunny Milano Magic hands as Swish calls him to score to win four thousand. I didn't do it because I said, "Let's not be stupid. Let's keep the money." I put a hundred bucks on the over. And uh, he almost just scored. If he scored right there, I might have just walked out. Yeah, that would have been tough. Good. I mean, we All want right. magic hands of tuck, but let's get to the chat here, Rob. All right, let's get to the chat. What do we got cooking, baby? Are you serious? We have horned up fellas. Come on, get the fucking chat going. Yeah, let's get our fucking buds in here, fella. Just heated up some Thanksgiving leftovers. <laughs> I love that, Chris. Uh, Not the turducken from six months ago. Yeah, here we go. Robbie, any chance you can call your hard mountain dude guy racial slurs on my behalf? No, I can't. I actually uh Swish helped me film the video. I had to be very, very PG. I actually had to cut out the end of it. Ooh, um, did you really? Because I wasn't. I wasn't saying hard Mountain Dew. I was only saying Mountain Dew, and they mm. like they're, that's a, they're strict. Folks, about that if part. you're gonna do do the do, Dewey Cox, I'm doing good. Juju Juddy, thank you for asking. OJ mode activated for Schmaltzy with the glove. Absolutely electric. That is true. 100%, baby. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Shout out to OJ Simpson. Ah, maybe not shout out. It depends how you look at things. If you like guys getting away with murder, may, I, I don't know. It depends. Anyway, as Adam Sandler once said, OJ Simpson, not a Jew. <laughs> that's actually tweetable. You should tweet that. Yes. Did somebody throw a flashbang in the room? Well, that's just that Arizona sun, baby. It's Wednesday, March 20th at 4.54 p.m. Yeah, like we say, we were here last week at the same time. It's like a set at Johnny Sins' place and filming a little bit of a Brazzers content. So, yeah, people, we got the extra mood lighting in here, if you will. Yeah, we got uh, NYC in the building. Here we go. Let's get hot. New York City, where are you guys from? Big Poppy Hattie, incoming book it. We shall see from Dirty Jersey in the house. Ooh. PDP, shout out to New Jersey. Uh, shout out to all the ladies in New Jersey getting ready, uh, getting the body tight for Memorial Day weekend, which is coming up. Is St. Louis nice? Well, no. I had a great time. Uh, no, it's not perfect. But there are great people there, and you can probably find great people anywhere. Uh, watching from Augusta, Georgia. Absolutely love that. Where are you guys from? Are you watching the game with us? What the fuck? Uh, is Noah Gregor wearing James Neal's number 18 like Ho Sang wore 66? I forgot about that. Shout out to James, the real deal, Neal. Uh, eventually, we're going to do some content with him. Yes, shout out to the uh, real deal, an absolute steal and a wheel. DC is a Neal. cesspool, but low can hidden barn. Yep. He daddy, we'll be drinking. I just got a coffee, dude. I just got a coffee. I'm trying to get off the sauce uh, for a couple days here uh, and go. Uh, I ripped the solo mission. All right, folks, we're going to get back to the chat. At the next commercial break, thank you for chatting as uh, number 24 picks with the puck behind the net. John Tavares, just an absolute student of the game, for checking with his knees bent, moving slow as molasses, but let's one go when it was stopped by Lingren. Ovechkin chips it back out over to, uh, I don't know who the fuck that is. That is Connor, Connor McMurdo. McMurdo, fella, going, going stick through body, back through full, body on Jake McKay. Wow. Full Shattuck St. Mary's Crosby. <laughs> oh, my Holy God. Shit. He said, I'm going to come inside you. Then I'm going to take my dick out of you. Then I'm going to come back and whack you. Hey, how you doing? I'm in the doghouse. Now I'm not. And now I'm in somewhere where I shouldn't be. All that for nothing, old Rob. That was a little bit of foot loose, like he was on the hardwood of the million dollar cowboy bar. That was actually kind of juicy. I was sick. I wish he got a shot off. Shout out to Connor McMichael, friend of the show. Connor uh, McFurda, as we get Dylan, Dylan Strom massaging the puck like a fresh piece of eight five weight goo, and he sends it well over the netting. And we will line up for a face off here, but we're going to get a look at here at Connor McFurda. Just twinkle tone. One, two, dipsy do dunkaroo. And then you know what? Jake McCabe says, play. enough of that, fella. I'm just going to lunge at your knee. 
Connor McFerna, how's he doing this year? Okay, we got a you, you ask and you shall receive. He's got 14 goals, Rob, 13 assists. That's good for 27 points in 64 games. Chat, get going. Oh, my Thomas Pocanic neck guard on Tyler Bertuzzi tonight. Yeah. Holy shit, does he have those? He's got that flop down. He's got, wow, that this looks juicy. You know, some guys wear the neck guard, like you can't see it. Like Oshi kind of hides it. Yeah. Uh, but to, I mean, Bertuzzi's got that thing up to his eyebrows. He, he's going full Christmas party, new boyfriend at the Christmas party. You know, you go with your chick, you want to make a statement, you go full turtleneck, and you put on an absolute clinic. I was going to say that's Placan that's like a Thomas Placanic extended neck there. My God, that thing would probably even protect a giraffe's neck. Anyways, right back to the game right now. 9.59 remaining. If you're following along in the first frame, is Dylan Strom tries a little bit of a one timer, he sends it back over. To the other end wall in the corner as Max Domi gets a pick of the puck with his tinted visor. And he's massaging the puck through the neutral zone. And he gets that intercepted. John Carlson corrals it, sends it to his deep partner. And we will skate here with a little bit of a neutral zone forecheck from the Washington Capitals. Who the hell is number 28 on the Leafs? Oh, my God. Is he is that like Holmberg or? I don't know. There's a couple guys out there. Absolute bender. These guys actually think they're going to win a round in playoffs. I mean, unless Styles and Poppy have two or three a game, like, good luck, fellas. I who, don't know. Who do you have coming out of the East, realistically? Realistically, I mean, if Carolina can score at the rate they are right now, they're going to be the toughest out in the league. And then you obviously got Florida, but I like, I like, yeah. I mean, dude, look at Carolina's decor. I mean, that decor is insane. You got Pesci, Shea, Burns, Slavin. Then you have Jalen Chatfield and Dimitri Orloff. I mean, that that's the best core in the league. Dimitri Ferda. I don't know, dude. What about Vegas' core? Tony D'Angelo gets scratched every night. Tony yeah. DeFerda. Tony DeFerda working at the pizza shop, serving nothing but wings, fillies, and a side of the Jardinera is getting scratched right now every goddamn game. Yeah, I would probably say Vegas is better, but they're in the West, you know? Yeah, that's true. I asked about the East. That's yeah. just my bad. I'm a fucking idiot. Right. Uh, but yeah, I would... Guys, fire up the fucking chat. Seriously. Yeah, let's get this chat Seriously. buzzing. We're going to go to a commercial break here in the next two minutes. Folks, again, if you're following along right now, 8.30 remaining in the first frame is Rasmus Sandin. Wow, a former Leaf sends a little bit of a pizza burger flying saucer style. He's coming off a nice fresh contract, about four and a hook for five or six years. So, oh, my magic hands, Milano. I love his afro, dude. He's straight out of a fucking 70s, either porno oh. or roller skating rink. Like, that guy, is he's a whole vibe. Have you ever seen him in person? I was with I played him. against him a bunch. I was with him. Uh, Not since his hair, though. No, I mean, like. Out of his gear, he's fucking huge. You would he never was, expect it. He's an absolute unit. That I think guy. he was actually I feel like Sean Madonna right now describing guys' as bodies. But anyway, I think he was juicy. He used to be <laughs> tiny. Dude, he used to be tiny. I'm telling you. Folks, no. We are going to yeah, tweet that, folks. Sonny Milano on the juice question. Don't tweet that. The OJ Simpson. Do not tweet that. But if you do, tag me. Anyways, we don't have a commercial break. We're just going to line it up here in the Washington Capitals. Offensive zone as Nick Dowd sends a little bio steel and water down the back of his neck. He's cooling off, and so are we over here. But the chat needs to heat up because Ovechkin oh, just hurt. had a drive, and somebody soaked that. I think that was Timothy Lilligren, who's got one of the weird names in the National Hockey League in terms of how he spells it. Nick Jensen out of St. Cloud State with a little silhouette turn. He sends it to his deep partner, Rasmus Sandin, and he sends it in the end wall for a little bit of a dump in fella. The Leafs have a lot of random players. I'm not going to lie in that bottom six. It's just kind of a mixed bag, right? It's kind of storage wars almost. You you open up that thing at the U-Haul Center, and you have no idea what you're going to get depending on the night. I mean, Ryan Reeves not playing tonight. His eye got swollen shut last night. I think he actually got poked, oh, in, really? poked in the eye by Nick Deloria at the end of the fight. You, you know you know that uh, in the UFC, those guys say the most painful injuries they've had is bad eye pokes. Yeah. Oh, Crazy. Dude, it, Can't imagine. It looked like because like Deloria tried to grab him while he was falling and kind of brace himself. And it just looked like he caught him right in the eye. And oh. Rebo's eye just was totally shut. So hopefully Ryan Reeves is okay. One of the bigger nail guns in the league. You always respect a nail gun because you don't want to get your chin tested, folks. That's rule number 68,000 in the Swishy Playbook. Who is this guy? There's a lot of random bodies out here tonight. Normally I know the National Hockey League at a decent clip. But there's a few guys. Honestly, I have no idea who they are. Anyways, back to the game right now. Tommy Wilson. Tommy High and Hard Wilson. Tries to play. Oh, my God. Heads up, Tavares. You're going to be on the tracks. Wilson, when he gets skating downhill, man, is a dangerous. Yeah, he's like he's a defensive huge. end, man. He's like Aaron Donald. Can I bring something up real quick? Yeah. It's your Patcher, Patcher Reddy only Patches. has three goals. However, 
I can see him scoring tonight because he just got that clutch gene. He's been like 10 games out of the goal. I think more. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Is he playing? Yeah. Patrick I'm gonna say Patrick. Right. I'm gonna say Patrick Eddie scores tonight. That would be uh, what? What do you think that bet is? That's gotta be like plus plus. I think it was plus like three eighty. <laughs> I was gonna say it has, I was gonna say plus five hundred. Milano maybe. was plus like four seventy. That's why I wanted to take it so pa- bad. Patches though, he's had a tough little stretch here in terms of getting traded, the Keeley's injuries, and you just hope a fellow like that could maybe squeeze out maybe one more good year. We're not gonna know if that will happen. That's why you play the goddamn game over here, folks. Is Timothy Lilligren sends a drive wide and Austin Matthews. With a little bit of a pull-up play to protect the puck on Nick Dowd. I love that play. Throw your back into a guy. Throw your back into it, baby. Like a Cardi B song. Anyways, now, folks, if you're following along, 537 remaining. As Rasmus Sandin collects the puck right on his own goal line. And they'll set up their control breakout. As the Washington Capitals swing deep and steep. And send the puck across the ice to Sunny Magic Hands Milano with a dipsy do. Right He's buzzing, dude. I'm buzzing telling you. He's puck. buzzing. You should have took the bet. I know. I wonder if you can get it. Do they do oh, like live dude. bets? Yeah, you could. I wonder what it would be at. That's actually like kind of a <laughs> sick move. Don't bet before the game. One of my buddies, that's all he does. He, he, gets a, he, he says he always has to feel out the game. It's like, fella, you're not playing. <laughs> what do you mean you have to feel out the game? <laughs> I kind of respect it, though. Like, Because then the odds go through the roof. Yeah, Let's yeah. say I took Sonny Magic Hands Milano to score. Yeah. He doesn't get one in the first. If I still love it, take it in the second. That's what he'll double the odds. He'll always ball this. He'll always bet on hoops. And he's like, no, I actually have to feel the wood before I'm like, buddy, you're sitting on your couch. <laughs> what do you mean you have to feel the wood? That's unreal. Like, well, you're not feeling shit. He's like, no, I know when guys are hot. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Magic Hands has like three shots he's, and and he's buzzing and he's getting a lot of ice. He hasn't had that much ice. No power play for Magic Hands the last few I games. I was gonna say, yeah, he's he hasn't had a whole lot of ice. I mean, I've seen more ice than some cups at the at Boondocks, but Sonny and Magic Hands Milano tonight is buzzing. He's skating well, which yeah, is, is yeah. the biggest thing I'm noticing right now. Because sometimes he gets lazy and he gets his knees, you know, they don't they don't really bend. But when he's buzzing, man, he's one of the sicker players in the league. And I'm not just saying that he is like he's a creative wizard. His okay. hands are unreal. His hand, I mean, that's why he's magic hands. You should see this guy in warm up. He's just doing the fucking Michigan the whole time. Four minutes remaining. If you're following along, we're gonna get to that chat at the intermission. 403, 401, 4, 359. This game is on TNT. Watch along with us. Um, you know, a couple big hits in this period switch, but not the most exciting hockey. I mean, there's been a few great A's. I'd like to see more desperation on Washington here. I mean, guys, what the fuck? You want to play in the postseason or you want to go to Cabo? If it's me, I'm trying to go to Cabo. I don't care. Right. You want the wet deck. You want to be, you know, at the Nobu Hotel. <laughs> you want to be at the Ped- Pedregal. You want to be at the wet deck. But these guys, I think a lot of them, especially the younger players, they want to be playing postseason hockey. Yeah. You get in the dance. Anything can happen. The one thing I will say, you said not a whole lot of Ooh. desperation, Rob, but I do think they are playing on their toes. Any time you see their captain throwing his body, I mean, most of the time he's just gliding, right? Mm. I mean, he he hammered John Tavares. He sent a message there. There's a couple of guys that went over the end wall in terms of right along the bench. So Washington, not the fleetest of foot team, but I think they're trying. I think, you know, for a team that's minus 30 in goal differential coming into this game, somehow has a winning record. Guys like TJ Sochi are out tonight. A couple other guys are missing the lineup. We'll see. Uh, where's a guy like Trevor Van Reems? Like, is he hurt as well? Chat, can you get at us there? Do we have any Capital fans in the chat? Chat one two one two is Trevor Van Reems, former New Hampshire New Hampshire Wild Kitten. Is he hurt? What's going on with TVR? Yeah, what's going He's on? He's a friend man? of the show. Butter Golf, good dude, throws right. So, TVR fella, hope you're doing all right. Anyways, back to the game right now. Rob two thirty. Two remaining as Tom Wilson intercepts that and ultimately squirts out to Willie Styles Nylander, who I actually have his twig here, folks. This is a Willie Styles special so Sherwood. Thick. This is the All Star Game edition. This thing's juicy. Yeah, show that autograph on the yeah, camera. Yeah, I will. This, this is. is a- uh, I wish you guys could feel this stick. Pause. Can you see it? Oh yeah. To the People's Insider, number one insider, stay butter. That it's stick is so job. light. It's so sick. I mean, it's like, it doesn't even feel like a real stick, man. Like, it's unbelievable. Uh, you guys like the Jets winning the cup. Dude, so I actually said I sneaky like the Jets. Swish had a great point. They're boring as fuck, but I actually do like the Jets. Coming out of the West as my uh, dark horse, if you want to call it that, because I'm a Vegas guy. Uh, no way around it. Yeah, but I, I like I like you know we get Winnipeg solid up and down. They're just boring as hell. Yeah, I mean outside of I think Vegas when they're going to get in as a wild card, depending on who they play, they could be playing Edmonton. But 
that, that's a team that I look at that, you know, they, you never know. They're, I think they're in the same category as a team like Vancouver, maybe the Stars as well. Hear me out on this. I don't think the Stars are as good as people say. Is I don't that, either. Is that crazy yeah. to say? No, no. I mean, like name, people name, like Dallas, Dallas. I'm like, buddy, like, I, I don't know. Name like, five players on the team. Right. I don't even know. Um, um, Zuboff. What's the most Russian number to wear in the show? Got to think it's 92. You know what? I'm going to go with Alexander Mogilny, number uh, 89. How sick is it that guys in the KHL rock 99? So sick. Like, like that is this it. most Russian thing ever. There's, <laughs> that is sick. There's actually like probably five to ten guys in the KHL that rock 99. <laughs> and there's just, just no respect. Like one of my favorite D-men, I'm blanking on his name right now, but he'll go white spray paint all the way up to where he triggers for his one-timers, and he rocked 99 yellow skates, chrome toques. That's bottles. And he was so juicy. I forget his name. He used to play on Moscow Dynamo. I had a, uh, I had Russian kids on my team. I was in this league. There, there was no import rule. And uh, they all spray painted their toques matte black, which is uh, – also, Al Dog said Rangers are good too. Yeah, Al Dog, you know what? As a New Yorker myself, I don't even comment on that team anymore until they're, they're in the second round up two games. Yeah. I'm tired of this shit. Yeah. Uh, like, I, after last year, after getting piss-pounded by the Devils on the – well, the Devils came back. I don't even think about the Rangers anymore. I don't think they're that no good. disrespect. I don't think they're that good. All right, guys, get the chat buzzing. Last three minutes of the period, and we're going to go back to the chat for the whole intermission. We might take a break. We might not. It depends how active the chat is. We have a high stick coming up. Folks, we're going to go and see. Oh, my God. Oh, they didn't Domi, call it. Domi got absolutely fucking whacked there by 42. We got a high twig here, folks. Did they call it? No, he just blew it down. I think they missed that call. But right now we got 203 remaining. Tyler Bertuzzi visibly upset, and he does not have a bad reason to be because look right here. Oh, uh, yeah. oh yeah, he got whacked by Dell. Hit his shoulder, hit his face. Yeah, I think he he ate that. I don't think Bert would be selling that, you know, especially with the neck. Oh, cover. yeah. He's pissed oh, he's off. Bleeding. He kind of looks like Rico Bosco from uh, Barstool. He looks so funny with like the muzzy, the kind of halfway in between long hair. He's got to have the and, worst uh, style in the league, and I yeah. actually like Bird as a player. I like I like his style when he has the long, crazy hair. And yeah, that's fits. Right. yeah. And then he's got the he rolls up the sleeves. He's got tongues down. He's got one forty laces in there. They like literally like touch the ice when he skates. He's just got funny style. I do like his game though. He, to me, he's a Red Wing man. I don't know. I know, dude. I, I agree. Just and because I, I like I played against him coming up in the Grand Rapids system, then he finally made it to the show when he was sick. Like great hit right there. That was a great hit by Simon Benoit, who drinks whole milk every night. One glass of whole milk for Simon, fella. Maybe mixing a beer. My fingers hurt. Can I have a glass of warm? I'll get you in a warm glass to shut the fuck up. As Nick Dowd <laughs> Alabama product walks in, that's not even Nick Dowd, it's Nick Jensen. But they're a both Ooh. St. Cloud Huskies. Are Hus they? Husky women. Yep, played Damn. against them. They were seniors my freshman year. And we have 116 to play. 76 seconds left in this first frame as we get a live looking on French on French. That's French dressing versus French press. And Simon Benoit and Abe, Abe Kubel. Whatever the hell his name is. We got a commercial break. We'll take one or two questions here. Bobby Gucci, what do we have? What are the people doing? Well, Jolly Train is heading to the Dominican. That sounds awesome, fellas. No, and how are we doing, boys? We're doing good. Fella, just grinding, baby. Just grinding. Uh, thoughts on the potential Yote complex? Might have to move out to AZ if that's happening. I think, dude, listen, I don't understand the auction part. Why is it up for auction? Why can't they just say, look, why can't we just get some can land we that doesn't fucking buy the land? Why can't we just go somewhere where it doesn't have to be an auction? Right. Let's just find land. There's a lot of land here, Rob. Buy the land. There's a lot of land. I've yeah. seen it. I drove to Vegas thousands of times. You're a real estate agent. There's. I'm a real estate agent. I'm a goddamn realtor. Buy the land where, wherever that is. Buy the fucking land. It's not that hard. Buy that poster and put the rink on it. Christ sake. I'll sell it to you. It's at TJ Maxx. Uh, MSRP is at $14.99. Who are you guys voting for in the presidential election? Uh, I'm just going to go public with this because I don't really care. I don't vote because I don't know what's going on. And everyone's like, you got to vote. You got to vote this, that. Why? If I'm not educated on the shit that's going on, why the fuck should I vote? I've Shut never the voted. fuck up. I've never voted. I've never voted. I don't, I've don't. i never been able to like, register myself in the state I'm living in because I'm always living in a state that I'm not from. Yeah. So it's like you got to fill all this bullshit. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm actually going to the bar right now. And then, like, you vote for somebody, and then they change all their policies six months after they get elected because it's a bait. It's a classic bait and switch. It's just Ooh, like I, I, I'm, about, I'm staying out of it. There's nothing wrong with staying out of it. I don't subscribe to this whole bullshit about how you have to vote. You have to vote. If you're not educated on the shit that's going on, and you don't have a favorite person, 
You don't have to vote. There's two chicks left in the bar. You don't have to pick one of the whack. You can go home and jerk off. Yep, or you can download the Tinder app and maybe straight gold on there. But anyways, yes. Good question. <laughs> All right, back to the game. Folks, back to the game right now. We have the active Mike on Patches O'Houlihan. That is Max Pacioretty, the veteran who played a year at the University of Michigan over in Ann Arbor. Go blue. Fuck the blue. How you doing? You're my boy, blue. He is a veteran of, I believe, almost a 1,000 games. He has played a long time in Montreal. Captain, obviously, Carolina, Vegas, and now in Washington. Good to see him back on the sheet, even though I heard he's a little bit of a nerd. But that's neither here nor there, as Rasmus Sandin massages the puck, and he sends it wall-to-wall to Alexander Ovechkin. And Sonny Magic Hands Milano is now skating. Has he been skating all night with Ovi? I don't know, but who's Ovi barking at? He's oh, Milano. Yeah, go to the netty, Sam. Don't stay in the corner. Don't yell at magic hands like that. I forgot I had the over. I need a fucking goal here. So yeah, what is OB pissed about? Well, he's, right he's here? barking at it because magic hands, he's he's staying on the on the wall there. He said, get, get to the fucking net, get off the wall and go to the paint so I can maybe hit you with a high tip yeah. or a redirection. But magic hands, he just wants to get the puck in the corner <laughs> and pick it up on a stick and go, you know, Michigan, which I love magic hands for. I love Sonny Milano. He Great is a guy. Beauty. Uh, all right, we game. got 50, 51 seconds remaining in the period. Uh, let us know if you're following along. I haven't seen many comments no. telling us, are you following along? Are you watching with us? Yeah, normally, I mean, normally it's buzzing. Let's Good get job. this chat going. I don't know how many people we have in here right now. Again, we do it for you, the people. So please let us know where you're watching from. I mean, Switch is in a UND tracksuit right now. I mean, what else do you people want? Right. Let's get this thing going. Act, just ask us anything. I mean, don't be gun shy, baby. What are we doing tonight? How are we doing? Again, it is industry night. It is Wednesday. Ladies night, unfortunately, is not until tomorrow. But again, right now, we have 15 seconds, and we will be going to our first intermission break. It's Tommy Wilson oh. with a drive, and Joseph Wall collects that puck nicely just with his blocker as he's able to get onto the top of the paint and make a hell of a save in the dying seconds of the first frame to keep his team up 1-0. I don't know why, but Twitter is like nerfing my shit today. I think it's because I posted ads and they yeah. like nerf it. So I have to repost this 17 times. So I'm going to say, all right, Q&A time. It's first intermission. Yeah. First intermission. Come on in and ask us anything. Caps need a go. Post. Folks, all right, everybody, get at us. Let us know where you're going low and slow from, baby. What are your thoughts on the wings? Uh, look, uh, we kind of touched on it at the beginning of the chat. I want to see the wings in the fucking playoffs. I'm tired of people in Michigan always being disappointed by everything. I mean, their government is collapsing. They don't have clean water. Their chicks, chicks every, are hot. Their chick, never mind about their chick. Their chicks are hot. They're fucked like. The chicks are like basically St. Louis girls on steroids, which is so sick. It's Hellcats and just Snatch. Who's ever the goddamn leadership group in the locker room just says, guys, this is hockey town. Let's get in the goddamn fucking playoffs. And Swish, I apologize for yelling in your ear for the last hour, but why like, does, let's get in. Why does David Perron not wear white scoots, white, white boots right now? Can someone clip this for me so I can send it to Davey White Boots? I always told David Perron. Clip this. Please clip this. I always told David Perron when I was a pigeon player for the St. Louis Blues getting scratched 20 games in a row. I would say, Davey, hey, fella, you're wearing white boots. You got to stay right around a point per game. That is you. If you're wearing white skates, you got to be right around a point per game, snapping it crispy, toe drags, saucer passes. And what did Davey do? He went the next three or four years going about a point a game. Davey, I know you've fallen off that pace, brother. But we need the white boots back. I need that swag in hockey town. I know the true skates don't make them for you anymore. You start with the Reeboks. They gassed you with the white. Now, true, I don't know if they do the white anymore. I see you rocking Bowers. But have your fucking equipment manager spray paint those things because we need Davy White white skates per on, white twinkle toes buzzing Yeah, we do in hockey town. We really do. Sorry for the Kevin Durant, but we need Davy White boots going. Uh, thank you for coming to the Calgary show. Again, for all the new people, we have a live show in Buffalo next, not this Saturday, next Saturday. Get your tickets through at the link in my bio on my pinned tweet. It's going to be electric. Which uh, Swiss, what are your frozen four? What's your frozen four prediction? God damn it, I can't talk. Drew Miller, well, I appreciate the touch of gray, my friend, as always with that profile picture that is always one of the greatest clips. Go dye your fucking hair, buddy, as Matt Martin told him. 
anyways, I think for my Frozen Four predictions, it all depends on where the regional is and how these teams are placed. But if I'm a betting man putting my chin and my wallet on the line, I would say being in St. Paul, Minnesota, I am going to go with the North Dakota Fighting Sioux, the Boston College, of course, that team is just littered with picks. And then I am going to go with something off the board. I'm going to go with a team. I'm going to say a team like Wisconsin. Ooh. As crazy as it sounds, I think that Mike Hastings is just a winner. And then I'm going to go with another NCHC team in Denver. So those are my four. I hope it's like an old school, like three out of four old school WCHA mixed in with some hockey East being back in the state of hockey. Live show in Minnesota. We're going to try. We're going to try. It's hard with playoffs how to set shit up. Uh, I think we're, what are we, five shows deep? Yeah. So we're getting the hang of it. But with playoffs coming up, it really throws a wrench in it because we don't know when the schedule shit, but we're working on it. Swiss, who the hell was your favorite D partner at Nodak? Uh, my first year, I played with Boston Bruin, Derek Forbert, a couple first round picks, snapping at crispy rice, trying to grow into our bodies. We were just like, uh, you know, something like along the lines of like a, just a long John Silver back there. We were kind of both just like, you know, big guys, big frames, still grown into our bodies. But he was an absolute beauty. One of my good friends still to this day. Dylan Simpson, the captain at UND for one year, played a little bit in the NHL. Now is the coach, the assistant coach at UND running the decor. Those are two of my favorite partners. So, yeah, I would say those two guys. Um, Magic Hands of Milano was plus 400. Do Hammer we take that. this? Hammer Do we that. take this? Also, 100 bucks on that. Use He's code score. Heat, heat Daddy on prize picks for a 100% deposit bonus. If you deposit $100, they'll give you a free $100. Also, I'm going to show what I, I forgot to use. He's going to score. Magic Hands. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right there. This is my prize picks for the night. I'm going lingering more than 25 and a half saves. Doesn't look great. Uh, Keller with three shots on goal. And Tommy Wilson with three hits tonight. Tommy Furta. Use code Heat Daddy for a goddamn one hundred percent deposit bonus. You son of a bitch. You and they always son they, of a sailor. They tell me not to curse, but unfortunately, yeah. I can't help it. Anyway, back to the show. They're telling Heat Daddy not to curse is like telling a nun she can go to the Bunny Ranch and have a couple kills tonight. That's simply off the map and not doable. That's well, why I get canceled. Uh, but anyway, my number one hockey memory is seeing Sonny Magic Hands Milano go forehand, backhand, bonk for the game winner. Backhand <laughs> bonk. That is so – Who Lambert. is that beauty? That's sick. I love that Sonny Magic Hands Milano is now going because this kid, literally, they used to call him that. He's the same age as my brother in 1996. He was playing on Long Island, Strong Island. Yo, shout, out to, Native. shout out to Long Island Ice Teas. They'll get you so drunk you'll piss yourself. Anyways, this kid, from the time he was 14 – and probably even before, was known as Sonny Magic Hands Milano to the point where all the boys just called him Magic. I got him at plus 360. That's hilarious. I mean, dude, he used to make YouTube videos of him yes. stick handling. Yes. And, like, he's nasty. Yeah, he used to, like, send them over Facebook to Nick and just be, like, tag him in it. That's like, look at my paws. I, I have a really funny story about Sonny Milano DMing me something. It, uh, dirt. Uh, he was playing junior, so maybe – I, I'm going to get his permission and I'll say it. He'll yeah. say it's fine, but sometimes I don't like to say right. it. It's not bad or anything. It's hilarious. But one day I'll tell that story. I got to get his permission. But anyway, it's such a snoozer. If Capture Isles make the playoffs, I agree. 100% Man, Juju. Fucking get the goddamn wings in the playoffs. TVR former Golden Knights expansion draft pick. I wow. Didn't know, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. Is Juju, that true? Juju. Well, this guy's from Vegas. I've okay. seen him in the chat before, so you must know. Do you think Celebrini would be a better fit on Chicago or Man Jose? I mean, listen. Right. Switch, so I'll hand this one. I off. mean, that's a that, that's not a dumb question, but I think we all know the answer to that question. If you're playing with a guy like Connor Fadard on your, Fadard. if you're going to be playing with him on your right, I mean, that is such a better situation for a guy to go into, especially two young guys taking over the city. You know what literally is happening in Chicago? If what? that happens, that's going to be like the just running it back with Taze and Kane. Yeah, it's, like it literally, it'd be the same exact thing. Two kids on the block. One that can play center, one's a winger, one's more high flying, you know, flying Hawaiian, styling Hawaiian with the bubble on, riding the waves, and Connor Bedard. You get a celebrity that can play up the middle, play heavier, a heavy stick game, penalty kill, two way guy. Does that not just scream? Yeah, what just does. happened in two thousand eight. And <laughs> NHL and the NHL is gonna love that because uh, they love that market there in Chicago. Uh, shout out to uh, 
Chicago. We'd love to go there and whack some chicks this summer. But anyway, uh, wacky chin. Small chin is a walking EP. Neat guys like that. Nerd of the game. I don't know if I would describe him as a nerd, but he's definitely knowledgeable of the game. PD, a uh, guy from New Jersey with a classic backhand insult. I, I wouldn't say that's an insult, though. He no. Just, he's saying you know your shit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say I'm a nerd of the game because I probably started drinking in the game of hockey at about age 13. But, yeah, I, I know the game, fella. I know the players. Fellas, guys, we're going to get to every single comment, so uh, keep them coming. We're, we're getting to every single yep. one. Unless it's full-blown R word, we're going to get to it. Captain, who do we like in March Madness this year? I'm not going to lie, dude. I just don't give a fuck about March Madness. Um, I don't either, but uh, you promised me something uh, when – Friday rolls around. Can we go to Diego Pobs and watch March Madness? Yes. It's so fun. If I'm not in Las Vegas, which I don't think I will be, I have too much going on. The answer is yes. Okay. Yeah. Let me know. Um, yeah. I just, dude, it, I just, it's so hard to bet on. And every year I lose money. I'm not betting on it this year. No. But, oh, well, I might. But we'll yeah, see. you will. Yeah, I probably will. Uh, bro, that's wild. The ref said it was a follow through. Okay. Wow. We're way up in the chat. That's a good, that's a good thing. Speaking of crazy Russians, when I was 10 or 11, I was doing a camp at my local rink, and I got dropped off a little early and went to the locker room, and Alexander Semin in there all alone, <laughs> doing push-up shirtless on the floor. Me being 10 or 11, not knowing what to do, I just sat down and watched. Well, Alex Semin was one of my favorite players of all time because he played the offside. He played on his left wing. He would come down and just absolutely label shots to the far side jar, which on most goalies, if he's coming down the left as a righty, was the glove side. He was looking to just go right past their ear, and then he would miss the net, usually probably 7 out of 10, and it would fully wrap out of the zone, and he would not back check back. But those three that he would get on net, two of them are probably in. Right past their chin. Right past a little chin music. Switch, is the red pepper overrated? I mean, I would say most would say so, but I grew up with white sauce hooked up to an IV bag being infused in my veins. So I'm going to say that's my favorite restaurant in the world. And if you look at my Twitter bio – in my backdrop picture, it is the red pepper. That's the only free ad I'll ever give to the red pepper. Shout out to Bruce Tellman. Shout hey, out the to man. Jeff Tellman. Those are my boys. Oh, okay. Watching from Australia. Oh, that is so gone. fucking sick. Hockey Night in Scottsdale going worldwide, and I absolutely believe this guy because he. it looks like Imagine he's whacking on the coral reef. A rugby player. Imagine whacking on the coral reef. Where in Australia? I just want to know. That's sick, Melbourne. bro. Thank you for tuning in. I want to see. I want to go to Australia and just like hear the chicks talk. You know. Oh my god! Yeah, it's crazy. Shrimp on the Barbie. It's like an Outback Steakhouse commercial. Watching from Detroit. Thank you for tapping in. Need at least win, my dogs. Oh yeah, that's true. You don't want Washington to win here, Rob. I know you hate lacrosse. Thoughts on rugby? I mean, I just think if you play rugby, you're you're in a best way. You're you're a psychotic maniac, and I mean that as a compliment. Yeah, you have to be in a weird spot in life to want to play rugby. That and, is just my two cents. And rugby is way more physical than lacrosse. Lacrosse, you, it just it sucks. You stand around in a circle. You you throw the ball back and forth between your net with a like it's. You don't even need the stick handle. I know you're, you're supposed to cradle. We yeah. don't need to do that. There's a net. It's just uh, bobbing and weaving, and all they're doing is slashing. And it's slashing, and then you pass around in a circle until one guy has the sack to run in and shoot the. The ball, I don't know. I'm fucking, I had a bad experience playing lacrosse, obviously. It's a weird game. Yeah, it's a weird game. Flyers, Islanders, are cast for third seed in the Met. Who do you guys want to see? I think we've we've been talking about this. Can um, we add more teams to the league? Can we get an expansion? Can we get an Atlanta there, in there by playoffs? Because I don't know if I want any of those teams. Yeah, there. I mean, I gun to my head, dude. I don't <laughs> know. I have, I have buddies on both Flyers and the Caps. So, I, I don't know. It's hard for me to pick, even though I shit on both those teams. Right. Who's winning the Hobie Furta? I don't I mean, even know the players. Celebrini's up there, but a guy that is steaming Willie Beeman as of the new year, Jackson Blake, who is Jason mm. Blake's kid out of North Dakota. Now, that might be a little bit of a homer sitting here in a North Dakota fighting suit jumpsuit in a Forks hat, but he is the hottest player in all of college hockey. I wouldn't be surprised if he can continue a two-week stretch here into the Frozen Four that he would be named the Hobie Baker, the Hobie Blaker come April 13th. The Hobie Ferda. Do we rock rubbers? No. Uh, the, the answer, you said no. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. As an Arizona State student, uh, you know, I've seen the diseases that are out there, and sometimes it's not pretty. Uh, but on Switch, Switch immediately says no. Wrapyourwrench.com. I mean, Bobby Gucci, you went to ASU. You had probably you yep. got chlamydia every night contractedly. Me being a North Dakota guy where it's 
a bit cleaner, a little bit cleaner. I would say the Wild West is a little bit more pure, but in saying that, you never know. Um, yeah, I mean, fuck, wrap your wrench. Fuck it. Wrap your wrench. Nothing better than a tea at Bonds or Grand Forks. Yep, Bobby Gucci had about nine of those and had to run outside and puke. Yes, you did. You had the Bonds or Burners. Then you had about nine Jaeger bomb shots in four minutes. And then you yeah. had a tea to wash that down. And next thing you know, you had your shirt off. And I looked down at the clock. It was 10-17. Yeah. We have to go back there for a Hockey Night in Scottsdale show. Oh, we do. We Because that was our first show. It was a little bit different. I think I said five words the whole show. It was um, I mean, those people go, are begging for it. Dude, we actually have to go back because I want to show the people of North Dakota that we, we've improved yeah. and we're bringing the fucking heat. I think the first show was good. I think it was great. But it definitely wasn't what it was no, now. No, no. I think we could. I mean, and I just think with the amount of people up there that would come, I think we could literally double that crowd. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, happy birthday, Pascal Dupussy. Uh, came to our New York City show. We appreciate you. Yeah, he's what a beauty. Should, what should be the Bev lineup be? Just go crazy. Just anything from a Mojito to the Jager Bombs, fella. Patrick Beverly of choice tonight. I would say, like Rob said, anything from a Mojito to a Wild Turkey shot. Mix that in with some Fireball to the tequila, Irish coffee. And end your night with an espresso martini and try not to fight the bartender that is a woman because that would result in some sort of domestic violence case. We have the Australia uh, viewer in the house asking a question. Are the Penguins done for the next five years? I'm going to say, yup. Done for five years? I mean, that's more than Olympic year. That's a little excessive. I would say under Kyle Dubas's watch, under his chin, it's not looking perfect. Probably. Yeah, it's not looking it's great. It's not looking perfect, and Sidney Crosby is going to be choked. Watching from the West Valley Oasis of Surprise. Wow, from Surprise, Arizona to Australia. This is awesome. You fellas going to any upcoming Yotes games? Yeah, I think we will be there Sunday. Um, yeah, for that Dallas game. We're yeah. going to be doing a little thing with uh, – well, I don't think it's, we're going to be doing anything, but we're going to be hanging out with the boys from Barstool, getting in the chin there, hanging out with those guys that Elio is doing his uh, IceCon event, the gambling whisper of Barstool Sports. Prez is right-hand man. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be there Sunday, brother. Probably go to uh, the last game of the season, too. Uh, Connor McStevenson and the Oilers are in town. Peter, are we tapping into the Yotes game during the buzz intermission? Nope. We're right here, right now. We're live answering your questions. Thank you for firing up the chat. I mean, this is great. Uh, North Dakota to the chip. I think we answered this 10 times on this one, but thank you for asking this. Not your fault. Not your fault. Nope. But, yeah, we hope so, fella. I mean, come on, baby. Let's go. Let's get that green going. Let's get the good people of Forks buzzing. The guys, I think they have what to – they got it. They got it in the locker room. Now it's a one and done. You never know in a one-game shot. I've played in a lot of those. Let's let's see what happens. All right. Hi. I like that. Hi. 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 What's up, doing? Harold, the sports guy <laughs> slash fan? Uh, Ice House Ron, how does nobody have a spot for Kessel? Switch. Well, I mean, Kessel is camp and Phil Kessel, he thought he had a spot. That's why he went up to the goddamn jungle for the first time in his career as a 36-year-old veteran and started skating again with a mixed bag of gear. He had a Coyote's helmet on. He had... Vegas gloves. He had everything. He had a 2000, his breezers from 2010. But yeah, you thought that the Canucks were going to sign him and Jim Rutherford and Patrick Avalon, whatever the fuck that Swedish guy's name is. And it just sucks that they they literally just stood him up like that. They just absolutely blue balled him. He skated for two or three weeks, thought he would have a contract, came down to the deadline, the 3 p.m. deadline on trade day, and ultimately nothing. And Phil packed his shit. Came back down to the desert, and that will probably be all she wrote. But ending it on a Dan High note, three mugs, 1,200 games, 1,000 yeah. points, $100 million. Your chin's going to be okay, but Jordan, it does suck. Jordo, what can you tell me about Andrew Panzarella Furda? Good coach in high school. That is hilarious. So Andrew Panzarella is a D-man that I played with at North Dakota. He played DN Ford, Rob, but he played five years in the USHL. Still leads the USHL in fights. He is probably the biggest nail gun to ever play at UND. Probably play in the USHL. He's a good man, and he is a hell of a fighter and a competitor. So if he's your high school coach, don't talk back to Pants because his left is heavy and his right is even heavier. He's got a hell of a chin. More importantly, he's a good dude. So Pants, tell him I say hi, fella. I miss him. Tapping in from Worcester, Massachusetts. Sick as a dog, but Hockey Night in Scottsdale might keep me alive. Thank you for watching. Sorry you're sick. It's that time of year where you just got to put a lot of vitamins 
directly into your chin because uh, yeah. the COVID's Z-pack. back. Z pack, COVID's back. It's COVID uh, back. COVID's COVID's always going to be back. So it's make so sure, sick. guys. Let's just flatten the curve. Let's. Just, I, I got to be careful what I say because I accidentally got canceled. But we can end this thing in two weeks. Um, word on the street is that U of Georgia is building a five thousand street arena on their campus. Um, Space Safari, very active in the chat. MVP of the chat. Love that. So yeah. Far. Love it. Uh, yeah, dude. I I think college hockey is definitely going to expand. I mean, Arizona started that whole wave and. Uh, well, I would love to see University of Arizona get a team. I, they will. And they get will. that in the NCHC. So yeah. now we can have that rivalry. You yeah. know what I mean? Vegas is going to get a team. They're going to get UNLV? a team. UNLV? UNLV is going to get a team. such a ghetto school. It's so sick. Yeah. It's fucking insane, dude. That campus is just. Have you just... partied there before? Like when you went to ASU? Uh, Did you ever UNLV? Yeah. No, no. 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 Dude, I've heard it's nuts. I never. We. I played. Like they, uh... they, they, they party on the strip, those kids. Yeah, there's no like. Well, if you go off the strip, like you better have a bulletproof vest on. Right. You better have one on the vest. Why the is that city so ghetto? I don't know. Uh, it has something to do with all the 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 drugs. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was say. Jesus. Um, starter sit Miller Lite or Modelo. It's a funny way to put that. Uh, I don't like Miller Lite. I'm not gonna lie. I hate to say it. Really? Sorry, yeah, I like. Uh, I would guy. say I like Modelo more. But as a guy being from Wisconsin, the fine pilsner, I, I think I have to say, you know, publicly, it's it's a fine pilsner out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. All right, we got to speed these last ones up here because the game is starting. Holy shit! How we doing? We're doing great, Chen. SEC he- hockey would be awesome. I completely agree with that. Rob drunk cigs or a morning zim with a coffee. Drunk cigs, not even close. Uh, uh, Checking in from a bar in Mexico City. Are you serious? Are, are Charlie you, Sheen, is that you? Do we have Australia, surprise Arizona, Mexico City in the house? I mean, are we really that international? Are you guys fucking with us? All right, Swish, back to the game here. Yeah, back to the rest. game here, folks. Please, again, load up that chat. That was a great intermission. Please stay active with us as we follow along the game here. Live from the couch in North Scottsdale, Arizona, we are watching the Washington Capitals host the Toronto Maple Leafs as we get a look at Tyler Bertuzzi who makes a little bit of a slip play into the middle of the ice, trying to find a streaking Morgan Riley, who went down and joined the d- offense as a active first wave. Swish, you want to you want to just – I feel bad. I, I want to answer you. You want to just go bang, 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 bang? Just- oh, we can just answer. I mean, like, it's whatever. We, we're going to talk enough. So, yeah, we'll, just, we'll keep going. Do we think Showtime is staying in Detroit for a few more or going elsewhere? Well, he's got another year on his deal, so he's locked in at least for the 24-25 season, Rob. And in terms of after that, we'll see how he his body depreciates, how it holds up. Now, Patrick Kane is a 1988 birth year. So right now that puts him at 35, next year 36. He's a late birthday in November. So I think Showtime's got two or three more years left in him uh, after this. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how Detroit does. Maybe he wants to get the fuck out of there. Yeah, true. Um Go to coffee order for the fellas. Uh, mine's just a black coffee. I like it black. Yeah, Americano, nothing on the chin, just straight black, baby. Coffee black, straight out semi pro. All right, we're going to get to the next one group of stay tuned if your question did not get answered. Fuck. Another talk. Is Sorry, that Styles? We that's my fault. Yep. Willie Styles here, folks. This is his twig. If you're new in the chat, this is actual game used all star. Th- Look at that thing. So sick. Folks, Willie Styles, baby. Sorry, we missed that, but chat, thank you. We're going to get to your questions and comments in a minute. Let's see what happens here. We have a little chip play by uh Well, a nice pass by Tavares Brink wide. Wow, there. I mean, he, he just beat even, him. He could barely skate there, and then he got the puck over to Willie Styles. And oh, what a oh. short side bunk on the Apo Taco goalie. Chucky Lindgren out of Lakeville with the St. Cloud State. There are three former Huskies tonight skating on the surface for the Washington Capitals, but. Willie Styles, making no mistake there, folks. Better call Saul because you're going to need some insurance. That was sick. Capitals are in trouble here, dude. They that was a stalt, brother. Juju, uh, Swish, how much does it normally cost for a partnership with a player? Like if a local brewery wanted to collab with an NHL player? Are you saying, Juju, you own a local brewery? And my two-part question to answer your question is it all depends on the market. So if you're in Scottsdale, you're in the Phoenix area, you're you're getting jack shit. You, you're not even getting a car deal. You got to grind for every penny you're getting. Guys like Clayton Keller might get a few bucks. Nick Schmaltz, some of their, their top dogs might get. But in terms of really raking in money, the Canadian markets, obviously. Teams like Chicago really raking in. 
New York, bigger, bigger time markets, bigger time teams. Those guys can make a decent clip off the ice in terms of some scratch, but it all depends where you are in the NHL. It's not like the, the NFL, but or, you know, some of these other leagues where it's baseball or obviously the association. Hockey really, really matters where you are. And again, Canadian markets, obviously the biggest draw, but there are some U.S. cities where guys can make some money off the sheet. And you see a guy like Ryan Reeves, who started his own local brewery in partnership in Vegas. His first year, he's got that 7-5 brewery. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know the number, but I'm sure, you know, it's a decent clip if it's a, if it's a good market. Willie Styles, though, I mean, 51 assists, 38 shot. tucks, new career high, 89 points in 68 games. John Tavares sends that wink ride in stride to Willie Styles, And then I just love just trusting your shot. I mean, going and they're showing Willie Styles a stick right there. It says Styles. Yes, it does. My yeah. Friend. Yeah. I mean, dude, if you're lingering, it's just like it, it, technically you do have to have that, but it's a great shot. I mean, just right upstairs where grandma hugs the dildos and it's a black one and it's not a racial thing. It's just, it, it was a black one. Uh, but caps, listen, caps, uh, you know, they're going to need a goal. I'll say that. I'll give you that high in-depth analysis. The capitals are going to need the next goal. You don't want, or maybe you intentionally go down three goal switch. The worst lead in hockey, or is it two goals? I always forget. Two goals is the worst lead in hockey, and we always say sometimes three. Folks, we are live. Hockey night in Scottsdale. Over here in North Scottsdale, Bobby Gucci, Jay Swish on the call. Gooch, how we doing, baby? Knuckles up. This guy just tucked one, eh? Willie Styles, Nylander. This is the all-star game twig over here. What do we got here? Shout out to the boys. To the people's insider, the number one insider, stay butter. Folks, Willie Styles puts the Toronto Maple Leafs up to Cobb. We have 17 remaining in the second frame. Back to the couch, baby. Switch, how do you feel about a guy fighting at this point in the game down to rip? You think I would love it. You think it's you think yeah. they, they do? You think chuck them, man. Get the yeah. momentum. It's fighting is all about trying to shift the momentum of the team. And right now, when you're playing desperate hockey, oh, there's TBR. Am I drunk? Jesus Christ, he's actually playing. I would love a fight, but who's going to answer the chin of a guy like Tom Wilson on oh! the Maple Leafs? Uh, who's yeah, even going right? to scrap on the Maple Leafs? I mean, I guess my guy like McCabe might, but he's not going to fight Wilson. So you then you have to go to the middleweight class, and they don't really have a middleweight in terms of Washington right now. Yeah, I mean, I think uh -huh. there's any a big hit could get the you know similar, yeah a big hit maybe something that. like that. 17 minutes remaining in the second period. Uh, I'm going to answer this real quick. Why does the media glaze the Red Wings so much? I think it's just because it's an original six team. They're in a hockey market. Everyone just wants to see them be good again, I think. I, I mean, why are the Canes so nasty? Because they play a disciplined game, and they're very boring, and they're good defensively. Best drip in today's game. Why not talk about them more, a little bit more? Willie Styles. Willie Great Styles. Player. You got guys like David Posternock. I mean, we're going to get to 34. Like, come on, baby. Not an insult at all. Complete respect. Yeah, I know that, PD. I was just fucking with you. Big and uh, big compliment for sure. We appreciate you watching from New Jersey uh, as uh, number 23. Man, I'm so bad with the players' numbers, dude. All right, I'm going to run out. Uh, you ever been buried directly in the head in a game? Yup, I've had three really bad concussions. And not those concussions where kids are like, oh, yeah, dude, I had nine concussions. I'm talking about <laughs> hospitalized concussions in the dark room for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, you know, puking, memory loss. I, I'll never forget a kid in a summer showcase game. I don't know what I did. I was a little fucking chippy, dude. I, I had no other way to play the game. Um, he buried me the kid skated from the red line i was in the, my own corner with the puck and i look up and just elbow me right in the head uh but yeah i got i got hit oh a few times like that we'll get back to that in a second 1633 remaining in the period uh capitals are having a hard time getting out of their own zone this line this line is absolutely buzzing for the caps and i don't like that pass i guess i do it got deep right there but uh sorry folks i had to fire out a little bit of content we are back yeah not the guys that say like they have like 19 concussions you know what i mean it's like all right buddy relax anyways folks right now back to the game sorry i had to send out a couple tweets and a couple dms honestly i got a couple sniffers out there a tonight skunks. it is industry night we will be doing a couple irish coffees after that and as you know you never know sometimes you end up at a place like evo 
Oh, and don't even see. You run into a stinky barn on a Wednesday. So, folks, right now we have 16, roughly 16 minutes to go as Willie Styles made no mistake of putting that one in the back of the net on Chucky Lingren. Like I said, better call. Oh, my God. Because that was straight assault, brother. It's Connor Timmons, who hasn't played a ton of hockey this year, Rob, sends it to the cage. And as you know, you get it through that first layer of the defense. You get it to the pads of a goalie and a Chucky Linger, and it squirts out. It squirts. It does squirt. And you never know. They're going to get a good chance right in front to maybe bang it home. Right now, folks, again, if you're following along, 1550 remaining in the second period. Did you throw that bet in with Magic Hands Milano? Because I think he's only had one or two shifts. He's not buzzing the same early as he was last period, Rob, but we will see what he can do. It only takes one. Shoot to get hot, shoot to stay hot as we look at the second line of the Washington Capitals in Tommy Boy Wilson, Dylan Strom, and number 63. Who, who the hell How dare that? you wear Tyler and his number? That's insane. Was that, that, be retired? that new Russian? Max Domi, is that a guy that you would re-sign at the end of the year? If no you're... disrespect, no. Like, Where does he go? Is he going to go play on another team? Or is he going to go back to one of those times he's already played on? He's actually not that bad of a player, too. Dude, him, you know, like he's decent. Dude, more more like a guy like Duclair is. Yeah, Dookie. Like, he's, he's so such filled. a good player, and he just can't. I, I would love to see a guy like that like stick somewhere, you know? Yeah, just put a little stick on him. Put a little pine tar. I, I just don't understand. Like, I know he plays on a terrible team, but how does a guy like Andreas Athanasio get a two-year deal and Dukey's bouncing around like a goddamn bus stop? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I he's like know. top 17, 15, hitting the, the blue rail, the light rail, the chicken rail. You the know? light rail. You know, you're, you're the green line to the blue line to the red line. We got a whistle. I'll touch on this real quick. Thoughts on Torch scratching the captain. Look, dude, I don't even know how this is news because it's Tortorella. He always does shit like this. I don't even have like, – oh, he's scratching the captain. He does this shit all the time. Don't you think he just does it for himself? Like, just to, like, like – I think he wants to, like – like he feeding his own ego, or what is he doing? Yeah, like – Because at this point, it's just stupid. Yeah, I don't agree with it, but it, it, I'm not surprised. No, you're not surprised. Right? No. Like, I'm not surprised. It, it, I see Couturier scratch. The zero part of me is surprised <laughs> by that. It's John Tortorella. He's always done shit like this. Right, it's Tortorella. It's like you're trying to, like, ignite the whole team by scratching your captain. But it's like, I just think that's just – there's other ways to motivate a captain that's been – a selkie winner before it's like buddy yeah. like, this is your captain this is your cheddar this is your captain speaking we'll be <laughs> touching down in vegas in 30 minutes please put the tray tables up and put your seat in there oh that was almost <laughs> if, you're in, in. if you're in the laboratory <laughs> stop whacking stop jerking stop whacking in the laboratory this is a 42 minute flight why are you pulling on your jimmy horn jr right now to our flight attendant absolutely crazy as carlson sends one to the front i mean the capital jesus christ i mean I keep forgetting I have the over, too. Magic so, Hands Milano is back on this line now. He's not playing with Ovi. He's back on the third line. So I think Ovi got, said, like, get him off my he line. He probably did, man, after that shift when he didn't go to the cage. Yeah, but fucking o Ovechkin didn't even get the puck through. And Sonny Magic Hands Milano defense. Like, the puck didn't even get through. Well, Magic Hands Milano. That's not the move that you want to make. That was an insane play by Rasmus Sandin. <laughs> that, man, that, that was – you went backhand toe drag to oh the Oh, my leg. God. If he scored right there, Switch, like, he might get – Sent down. He might get yeah. waved. Well, their GM, McClellan. Oh, my God. McClellan's oh looking at him. Like, he just put his chin. Yeah, that's a tough shift for Santine there. Oh, my God. Go sit for two minutes there, buddy. But, yeah, for sure. But in, in Magic Hand Milano, his d defense, going back to that play with Ovechkin in the first period, Rob, is he thinks he's shooting that 100%. He's yes. like, there's no way he's passing to me. So why would I go to the cage? Why yeah. would I? I think you're probably going to either miss the net or this is going to get gobbled up because – you know, if that gets steered away to the corner, Magic Hands is right on it. So I, I don't mind where he's positioned there, but he was just freaking out at him. How about that backhand toe by Sandin like he thought he was playing in the Swedish third league? Yeah. Like, what I are mean, we dude, doing there? Listen, this is not the Elspenskin, the El Skunkson. I'm going to ask. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Did it go in? Just the tip. Almost in. No, it didn't, but it was just sitting right on the, the goal line. two of us. I mean, dude, if you're Sandin right there, you know, I, I'm just an asshole on the couch, but. You have number, you have time and space, right? You have guys going to the net. To put it between your legs and try to toe, at, toe drag as the last man back is insane. Well, he was coming downhill as he fully knew he was the last guy back because he was at the top of the umbrella the way it was shaped up to be. It's just like, how are you that cocky? I mean, you're down to rip him out. If that breakaway goes in, that's like but you're you're, you're, you're not you're, you're not Eric Carlson, you're you're Rasmus Sandin. Yeah. I you know. have 20 points. Ballsy, dude. That yeah. is insane. You're not a hundred point guy. That was crazy. You know, I actually played with that kid in, in Toronto. He was my D partner for probably like 20 games. He's pretty sick. Who? Sandine. 
Yeah, I mean, the, in the jungle. Like, I'm not trying to say. I just the decision right there. And the, oh my god, no, no give and go. No, you're right. I'm I'm uh, I'm 100 agreeing with you. I just think that was an absurd play. They're showing him right now. Hey, fella, what are we doing here? What are you doing? Like, oh, look, look at this. this. No, through the legs, and he almost set up a three on zero, and then he got a yeah. chin hammer. <laughs> oh my god, that's a, such a tough shift. Fuck, he looks kind of ugly with that long hair too. Long hair, don't care. Chucky lingering. Saved by the grace of the gods, Romeo. Right now at NHL on TNT, we're going to go to a break here, Rob. What do we have in the chat? We have Rob. How's your tennis game looking? Swish and I actually played today. It's not Wacky great. Today, yeah. Um, You know, I played with my mom all week last week, and I always feel like I'm the best in the world. And you play someone like Swish, who's an actual – well, my mom is an athlete, but a professional athlete. Uh, it's a little bit different, but it's good. Yeah, I was in, uh, Rob whacked me today, folks. I think it was 6-2, 6-1. So, yeah, I was shit. I hadn't played in – a while, but yeah, Gucci is pretty good. He's if he gets his serve down, he's gonna be uh he's gonna be a man to be to be reckoned with. I think he's uh he's pretty good. I just hate not having power. Like I hate when I have power it goes out of control, but then you have to like fucking just play. I don't know who cares. Yeah, but I'm gonna anyway. have to find a secret uh a secret coach here in the next couple of weeks and try to get my game dialed in. We'll do a vlog, dude. That's yeah, a, that, we'll do a tennis vlog. Why not? Um, I can see UNLV getting Arizona <laughs> get an NCAA team. Yep, I agree. What's that one up there? Uh. One. Oh, right here. Yeah. I don't even know what this means. Switch. What does this? Where does a spotted cow rank on the list, folks? For those that don't know, spotted cow, New Glarus, Wisconsin, oh. small little Swiss village just outside of Verona, Wisconsin. Spotted cow is the best beer in all the land. They don't sell it anywhere besides outside of Wisconsin, Rob. So shout out to New Glarus. Shout out to people that drive drunk drinking spotted cow. I feel like Panera. I feel Panera is somehow underrated. Here's the thing. I'm gonna say no because I hate to be this guy, but the, once again, the playoffs. The guy puts up fucking 100 points in the regular season, yep. but then the playoffs come around, and what are the Rangers doing? Nothing. Yep. And that the Rangers need to win now. They need to win now. And it's not – Panera's nasty. Everyone knows that. But that's the only reason why I can't – Well, that's the whole Rangers. reason why Stan Bowman back in the day traded him out of Chicago was because he mm. couldn't play in the playoffs. They got swept by Nashville. He said, get this guy out of here. And that's why Kaner was so mad when they did it. But it's been a tale as old as time to this point where – he does put up okay numbers if you look at Hockey DB with his playoffs, but it's all cookies on the power play. Right. You have to be able to play five on five in the playoffs, and he has not shown that to date. Yeah, I mean, you know, what are you going to do here? But back to the game. We'll get back to the chat. Oh, my God. Holy shit. Gun in the holster like Ovechkin was in the Revolutionary War there. Holy gaming oh. Crockett. My God, that was a piss missile he sent wide. High and dry, folks. Ovechkin said – I have disregarded all your lives, and I'm going to fire this BB wherever the hell it ends up. Connor McMichael massaging his way Again. through five <laughs> Leaf players. He's able to corral the puck and get it to the point where a Swedish defenseman, I can't pronounce his last name, gets a drive on net, and we will skate to the left faceoff dot, and we will go for an offensive zone. Well, faceoff, and we're looking at the most, con seasons, most consecutive seasons with 20 goals. Obviously, Mr. Hockey with 22. Alexander Snowvechkin, 19. Brendan, I used to run the player safeties department. Shanahan, suspy by Shanny coming in with 19 as we get a live look here at Alexander Ovechkin with the little just for men. Touch of gray in the top deck of his lettuce. I got to say something. I think Hull looks good. I don't think he's been tested that much, but he looks dialed. Like, even right there. Yeah. Joseph, did Magic Hands get a piece of that? Joseph Wall. Yeah, I got a little touch of it. Of course oh, he my did. God, dude. I would be so <laughs> rattled if I bet that right now. He uh, that's Mag a hit. Magic. I mean, he's buzzing. Like, he is he's buzzing. like that's a good stick there. Uh, Matty Nice. He's buzzing, man. He looks good. He's not skating as well as he was in the first period. I think his legs are getting him a little bit under. But we're gonna get a power play here. I don't know now, if I agree with that. I think right now, if we can take a live bet, if you're gonna bet o Ov one timer, he's scoring. He hit that post in the first period. They're gonna get trigger fingers over there. They're gonna get something going. Yeah, that's a penalty. Yeah, he, he, is it was yeah, it a trip? It was a can opener. Oh, I yeah. thought he just ran yeah. over him. No, it was a can opener. Capitals, now's your goddamn chance. We're gonna get to the chat in a minute. Yeah, keep getting at us. Chat loaded up. Keep getting the questions. Again, that first intermission was really good. Now keep that buzzing. Right now we have 1055 to play here in the second frame as the Washington Capitals will skate with a man advantage. Five on four as we get a live look at the number one unit of the Washington Capitals. It's so funny. That left flanker position where Alexander Ovechkin plays his office over there, Rob, if you will. They don't even have a guy that changes for him because they know he'll play two minutes. So most power plays, they'll have 
you know, you go to a power play meeting, you have 10 guys in there. Washington confirmed they only have nine because they know Ovi is never going to come off the ice. No, I mean, listen, as long as that shot doesn't die down, he's going to be on there. Even if he can't even fucking skate, even if he's skating like his skates are filled with peanut butter, you know where he's going to be. He's going to let it rip. Do you think, like, if he was in a wheelchair, they would still have him over there? Just like, you know, just trying to, like, say he didn't get to, he needed like three goals to get to Gretzky's record, but somehow, God forbid, he, he lost power in his legs yeah and he, he needed to play you know he needed three goals would they put him in a wheelchair just so he could just go torso and just cock one-timers yeah or, I think or they so. put him in front of the net yeah no I, I think they had him in a wheelchair over there for two reasons one because his shot he could still generate power and two uh this if you fire him off the power play because he's disabled i think it's ableist and i think it's disrespectful to the it, oh, oh told, my told God. You, told you. I told you. He was you tough. called it. I, t- I told you, if you're going to bet, bet on Obi. He's going to tuck. They're going to get it over to his office because he just had that. I mean, he, oh, are you serious? He should have had the one in the, in the first that hit the post. You, you knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. The penalty you just kill. know it's coming. Oh, yeah. He said, look at look at me. Oh, no way. Who's he chirping there? Who is he chirping? That was sick. That was so sick. Eyes on you, fella. Look at this play by Carlson. The hold the front. Boom. Wall can't oh get there. My God. That play, I mean, it's a tale as old as time. But watch Carlson sell the shot here, folks. To all you young, ho- to Go all ahead. you young hockey players out there watching this, watch Carlson gain the middle, hips facing Wall. That's the key. Freeze him in the middle, and that Wall has to honor his shot, and ultimately slides it over to Ovechkin. It's like taking candy from a little kid, baby, at Party City. And then who did he stare down there? Was yeah. that the guy in the box? I don't know. That was crazy. That guy did that to me. I'd be like, what the fuck? That was fucking sick. That was nails. Dude, even the way he got that in short style is just, wow. What a boost for this team. What a tuck. Now what you need to do, you need to come out and have a fucking unreal shift. What a player there. And they're buzzing right now. We go. The tides may have turned here. They got a little pep in their step, obviously, after that goal from their captain igniting the bench, giving a little bit of a stare down. Right now we have 2-1. Obviously, the go-ahead goal coming from... Willie Styles, Nylander, where is Mitch Martin tonight? What is he doing? Is he playing Halo? Where is Mitchy Sheets? Because I've not seen him on the sheet. He's not playing tonight, is he? No, he's out for like at least two more games. He's got an ankle injury. Okay. Uh, wow, what the fuck just happened there? I know. Joseph Wall almost lost that one in the wickets of his pads. Folks, right now, if you're following along, 9.08 remaining in the second frame. As we have Hockey Night in Scottsdale brought to you by Butter Golf and Heat Daddy Merch. Folks, if you like the Heat Daddy, you like what he does online, go over to HeatDaddyMerch.com. Buy a shirt. Buy something. Buy a buy one of those flags that the Heat Daddy yep, has put out. Flags out right now. Just uh, something about pissing in the wind with your wrench oh, out. Go buy that flag. We had a bunch of people rocking those flags actually at the last live show. Those are pretty cool. We signed a couple of those. Again, go to Butter.Golf, the official merchandise and lifestyle brand. Hockey Night in Scottsdale. Go check that out. Butter.golf. Actually, have a couple friends of the show. Oh, a couple guys that rock our stuff. Austin Matthews, you might have heard of him. Willie Styles, both goal scorers tonight. Butter Golf guys. That is no coincidence. I am rocking a Willie Styles Sherwood All Star Game edition. Dude, is this true? What? The internet says that Ovechkin is only 51 goals away from Gretzky. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. It's not much. Why are people saying that he's not going to get it? Of course he's going to get it. He's well, going to get it next year. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why. They're, they're dummies. It's crazy that John Buchagras had predicted that since like 2013. That is crazy. That's an insane take. Like, that's pretty ballsy. I mean, I know you're just a guy on the internet, but that's still a hell of a take by Bucci. Shout out to Bucci. Shout out to Bucci because he wheels. So, anyways, folks, right now, 747 is we have a little bit of a scuff up like outside of an Irish bar after a UFC fight. A men will corral and gather behind Joseph Wall, or sorry, that's Ryan Lindgren, or sorry, Charlie R- Lindgren, talk much swish. And we're going to go to commercial break here, Rob. Can you grab the – I got a tweet. Yep. Can you grab what do the, we have uh, here in the chat? We got folks? a lot. It's fired up. Sorry, I got to tweet the goal, folks. Uh, swish is going to take over the chat until I'm done tweeting. John Tortaferta. John Tortellini. Uh, let's go here. A lot of questions on when you're coming to Miami to party. Thoughts on the on the Pens potentially sending Crosby to the Avs this summer? Well, obviously that would have to be a move that Sidney Crosby himself signs off on because Kyle Dubis is not going to make that move without the consent 
of number 87. Obviously, he has a full no movement clause, but that would have to be, I think, orchestrated by Crosby going to Dubas and Mario Lemieux and Fenway Sports and saying, hey, Mista, Mista, get me out of here. This team is dog shit. So we'll see on that. Rangers are frauds. Yeah, I think so too, but we'll see, fella. Did you see Salablanca's boyfriend died? He was a hockey player. Yes, that was not good. What else we got? Chat, keep going in here, baby. Keep getting at us again. Like we always say, please load up where you're watching the game at on your iPad, on your computer, and then where you're watching the boys with. Where are you following along from? Please get at us in the chat. Tweet at us. Send it on Instagram. I love seeing where the folks are tuned in from watching Hockey Night in Scottsdale. So get at us there, folks. Frozen four predictions. I already mentioned that earlier. I had North Dakota. Now, it's hard to say because you don't know where these teams and the regionals are going to line up. But I had North Dakota, BC. I had Denver out of the NCHC. And then I had a random one. And just because it's a local team where I'm from, I had Wisconsin. Mike Hastings somehow sneaking the Wisconsin Badgers in. So we'll see there, baby. How's my golf game? It's not perfect. I'm like a 8 to 10 handicap that carries two drivers in my bag. I, I shoot anywhere from 80 to 95. I'm kind of just wild thing out there. But fuck me, I can make a putt from Tucson, just right up the I-10. I can putt from anywhere. So that is kind of my game. Is it the Leafs year this year? I don't think so, Robert, but we'll see. Tucker Ness should get the Hobie for going full scrap mode right out of the box in a college game. Fucking rock star. Yes, I did love that. I'm not sure why Greg Powers, I know friend of the show, was not a fan of that. I love that. That was old school. He got suspended three games, won another one by his coach, but... GP, if you're listening, baby, Uncle Swishy here. That was a nail gun play. That's old school. If I'm the coach, I know you got to deal with universities. I fucking love that. And Nusser, Holy shit, Nusser, keep that chin tucked. And speaking of Arizona legends, Austin Matthews pots his 57th of the season to get the go-ahead goal to lead the Leafs 3-1. to one. They are back up by two goals. I got to see this again because I missed it, Bob. That's such a kick in the dick if you're Washington. Like, Kicking you're, the wrench. You're right there. You got all the momentum. And, you know, unfortunately, you're playing 34. Is one of, gonna go down as one of the greatest goal scorers we've ever seen. Yeah, if not uh, the best. You know, not the glazest guy's wrench, but a fact's a fact. David Spade's oh. David Spade. And good. Wow. Are they going to challenge this? Nope. No, nope, Bert's good there. But look at this. Just a little river dance. And I like to call it just about six inches off the cage, off the ice, inside. Doesn't post. touch anybody. Double do Dunkaroo. My God, that was sick. It was just a little skipper. I forgot Joel Edmondson was playing on this team. I always, I'm kind of out to lunch. I haven't watched hockey in a week, and I'm, I'm all over the place. <laughs> out to lunch. Jesus. A wise, man, a wise man once said, how's your wrench, fella? And it's shaken me up ever since. Neeks, that is so true. If you're going to do one thing in life, put your wrench and chin on the line and see what happens, baby. Playing anything to roll the dice just one more goddamn time. As we get back to the game here, folks, 6.30 remaining as Rasmus Sandin misses the kick. Oh! And who is that? Was that Ab Michael McFurda. Holy McFurda, fella. We'll take a double McFurda. Hold the OJ Mayo. We have a one-goal game again. That was a weird hop off the back end wall as Rasmus Sandin sent that wide. And McFurda <laughs> picked the pill up. And made no mistake of it. Connor McFur to Michael. How does this happen here? Yeah, oh, my a God. Little bank. Play, That's a little, just a goal scorer's goals. Little as Adam think. Banks. Shout out to Adam Banks demanding a trade over to uh, the, mm. the Hawks. Uh, getting no pussy. District 9 back in the day. Quack, I mean, quack, man. quack, Mr. Dutch. I feel, I feel bad for Wall because I, I feel like he's played a solid game. It's just like. His chin has been solid, but that's a tough bounce. And. You know what? One, you just frankly got to shake off. Get back at the game here, folks. Again, right now, if you're following along, 6.09 to play in the second period. We get a little bit of a whistle. as Bobby McFurda <laughs> draws a little bit of contact in the front. And like I said before, a scuffle in front of the cage. Like in front of an Irish bar after a UFC fight. Why are you drinking so much Guinness? Why have you had so much Fireball? 
Can I get a hot toddy and a right, right to my chin? Oh, that's tough. I mean, Wallace is trying to get back to the cage. He's trying to get back to the post. And Mick Furtis sends it right off his fucking chicken wing. Gets a little bit of a favorable bounce. And Alexander Ovechkin gets a plus. Oh, Folks, again, right now, if you follow along, 604 remaining here in the second frame. 3 2. The Toronto Maple Leafs lead the Washington Capitals. I wonder what a guy like Joel Edmondson had on the board tonight. His ex team, his ex girlfriend, his side piece. He comes over from the Washington Capitals at the deadline. He is playing them for the first time back in his old arena. You got to think Eddie probably had at least a couple thousand bucks on the board tonight in honor of playing his old team. I'm sure his gal's in town, his fiance, the lovely. So, yeah, that might be three, four grand. Who knows? And uh, as we get back to the game here, we are looking at the Maple Leafs third line. We have Robertson, Nyes, and as well as Holmberg, I believe, or whatever the hell his name is, a Swedish fella. Somebody in the chat said Poppy's going to have a have a hat trick, and they might be right, Swish. I mean, we got five minutes remaining in the second frame here. He's got two. I mean, great prediction. I mean, not you know, not the most wild prediction, but no, he'll he'll probably get the hattie. I mean, he's going to get the empty netter if they end up winning this game, and I would say he probably gets some. Probably even before that, I would think sometime in the in the third frame. Fuck, maybe they're the next shot. You never know with this guy. He's got 57 on the year. He's absolutely buzzing. He's just a guy, man. All he does is tuck. He's like Wilt Chamberlain off the hardwood. All he does is tuck. Oh, my God, that was a sick play of Poppy. had a stick down Pertuzzi with a great little one-two look there in terms of trying to send to the far post and get Poppy some wood on that pill. Dude, I uh, shoot that. Oh. Oh, you gotta go low with that. I want to see a three-three game here, Swish. Uh, you gotta go low. You got what's uh, over under six and a hook? No, it's six flat. I'm gonna hit it. Okay, then I'll pay for dinner. Yeah, all in. But uh, well, look at how fast that puck comes up. All right, we're gonna get to the chat. Fire up the chat. We're at the bottom of the chat here. We're gonna rip through the chat. How bedarded would the Hawks somehow get? Yeah, we answered this earlier, but yeah, I mean, Swish compared it to. Taves and Kane situation. Two young guys coming into a shithole franchise. Um, two guys coming in trying to right the ship there. But, um, yeah. We're not that young. Any info on what was that from? Wedding Crashers. It's a hell of a season, pal. <laughs> hell of a season. You ever think about we just look back at this and just think, yeah, we're just two young kids running around. <laughs> yeah. you know, we're going to look back at this and say, you hey, are just two young kids running around, having a good time. And he just looks at me and goes, we're not that young. They're like 40. 40. <laughs> it's going to be us. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, not Johnson that. to the Bruins. I think it fell through because of a physical that uh, Brian Johnson couldn't pass. Um, but anyway, fellas, we know OV. OV is going to break the great one's record. But is it crazy to think that Magic could pass OV one day? No, it's absolutely not crazy. Well, he's going to. He stays healthy. He's gonna if he stay, yeah. Took the words out of my mouth. I, I, he, I, 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 he's good. He's 100% going to. Is Brigal? Is this true? Briz, you're telling me that Brizgalov has a son that's a goalie. Brizgalov wasn't. I thought he liked wrench. And he's putting. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, we thought Brizgalov appreciates a wrench over here, which is fine if that's your. Yeah, we're not saying it's wrong. We just thought he he threw Apo Taco. But if he has a son and he's throwing at a nine three three, holy jumping! Apparently, he's nasty, according to the chat. Which uh, you know what? That's good uh, intel. Good job. Uh... Folks, keep getting at us here in the chat again. We have about five odd minutes left to play in the second frame. As we always do at intermission, we will go to the chat. We need you buzzing because without you, we don't have a guest on coming today. So you are our guest. It is, again, the People's Edition over here featuring the People's Insider and Bobby Gucci, the Heat Daddy. 4.45 to play if you're following along right now. We have the Leafs leading. The home team and the Washington Capitals, 3-2. Shots, 2019, barely evened up there as Sonny Magic Hands Milano tries to send a little bit of a burger in between the wickets of Morgan Riley that was deflected and ultimately ended up on their own side and the opposition still playing defense. Holy oh clapper and a cold shoulder by John Carlson. That was a tough sequence as number 24, who, who I have no that? idea... For the Leafs, they have all these like weird lefties that are just soft, like David Comp, this other fucking 24 doer. Well, that's doer from the wild. Why did I don't who? 
that Connor Dewar, that guy from uh, the Wild. Dewar, I barely even know her. All right, back to the game. Four hundred four remaining. Yeah, I don't know. I, I know the name, but I didn't yeah. know he was there. Do you, do you think the Maple Leaf white jerseys make tougher guys look softer? For whatever reason, I think uh, the field guys look nasty in them. I think for whatever reason, it's too much white. Yeah, it's just you can't have too much white. It's like a chicken. You know, you need both sides of it: dark yeah. meat, white meat. It's like chicks. You can't have too many white chicks. They're no. annoying. They always want tequila. They all they care about is Diplo. You got to mix it in. You got to be ethnic sometimes. You got to drive a foreign whip. You got to eat a, a black. Never mind. Yeah, you got to drive a Nissan Altima, right, with a little bit of spray paint on it. Yep, nothing wrong with that. As uh, number twenty-five and number eleven, uh, number two, uh... <laughs> folks. Right now, three twenty-two is Connor. Oh, oh my God. God. There it is. Someone in the chat, play the lottery tonight. That's a hat trick. This kid's an absolute freak. Can you get mine too? Yeah, <laughs> folks. That's a hattie. Let's go scoop that. Thank you. Oh. Wow. Look. Throw him at the TV, folks. Big Poppy. I mean, this guy might even pass. This guy might get to Gretzky before. Holy him. shit, but what a play there by Max Domi. F3 high. He's able to draw two defenders to him, a little stop-up play. Poppy finds Connor Timmons in the middle of the ice. All shots are good shots, especially from the top of the key. But what does he do different than Magic Hands Milano didn't do in the first period? We love Sonny. But what did Poppy do? Watch him come out of the corner. He makes a pass. What does he do? He goes right to the cage. That is a goal scorer's type of play. Distribute the puck. Where's the puck going to end up when it's in the middle of the ice from Timmons? Well, it's going to be a one-timer. If he gets a low shot, it's going to be a rebound. Poppy anticipates that, gets his feet going from the corner, inside ice. How you doing? Gets rewarded for it. That is hockey, baby. That is three. Now there is a coach's challenge. We will see what comes of this. What, 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 for what? Offsides, folks. And I don't oh, think Oh, that's would... so far. If they do take this away, that is absolute bush. Like, give the kid the hattie. We just threw our goddamn hats for Poppy. Let's well, Give us a look here, TNT. Let's let's give see if it was. Fucking give us a goddamn look. Chat, was that offsides? Do you guys have any other looks? Okay, they're going to give yeah, us a look here. Yeah, what do you here. guys think? Oh, God. Oh, it's it. off. Oh? Yeah, it's probably off. Can't tell from that fucking angle. I don't know why Can't. they show us that. Can't tell from that angle either. Oh, that's offside. Don't you think? That's so stupid. It doesn't affect the play at all. I know. I hate that rule. Show the good angle. Like, I mean, the it, blue line angle. It is offside. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. He could see, watch. He's still gonna get the hattie. Ball don't lie. Yeah, the ball. I mean, the ball does not lie. So hopefully he's it. Look at Bert's knob. He Bert's no, knob is hilarious. No knob. How bad do you think Bird feels? Fuck. Yeah, like fuck, dude. Well, you, you know, you take away the hattie from a guy making him thirteen bananas. You're like, fuck me. First year on the team. I know it happens, but fuck. I mean, dude, just like we didn't even get to see the good angle, by the way. I mean, that's just Gary trying to get Washington in, if you ask me. But uh, Washington's in desperation mode. Definitely can't go down two goals, man. I mean, yeah. What, what, the whole point of hockey is you got to have more goals than the other guys, right? Yeah, like, you do. I, you just hate to see a good the, the bring the man down, especially Poppy with a little bit of minority in him. You know, good heritage. They're trying to, yeah, they're trying to take down the Mexicans. Yeah, they're like listen, like what is this Fox News? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, a little bit of fire out of. Washington. Oh, yeah. to the dust up. Who did he take down there? It's like a, you know. Oh my God, dude, that guy's laying dead. Two o'clock in the morning at the frat house, fighting over the last natty light. Nick Dowd, Alabama product. Play me some Alabama. I don't even know who the fuck that is. Who the Who's hell is Malenstein? I don't know. He sounds like a Russian and a full full forty seven like Radulov. Oh my chin music! He goes in that hard. Oh. Chaveras, I mean, you kind of chicken wing Waller anyways there, fell. Oh, my God, coming in and swinging. That, he didn't doubter. even do anything. <laughs> Jesus, doubter. Relax, buddy. Folks, right now, if you're following along in the game, you saw that scuffle up just outside of a bar at 2 a.m. when some guy's trying to whack your chick, and you're thinking about whacking his, and all of a sudden, we went to a hockey game, and a fight broke out. Right now, folks, we have about two minutes remaining here in the second frame as they just took away that goal from Austin Poppy Matthews. 
Number 34, you hate to see it, but the Toronto Maple Leafs still lead the Washington Capitals 3-2 right now. Shots 2019 pretty much evened up. 318, three and a hook left in the second period as we had a little bit of a dust up, but that was neither here nor there because the faceoff comes outside and we get a look at Washington's second line playing against, well, the Leafs' first line, Austin Matthews, Tyler Bertuzzi, and Max Domi tonight going with the presence and absence of Mitchie Sheets Marner, Darnell nursing a ankle injury, I'm told, via Bobby Gucci. So, folks, again, right now, please load up the chat. Get at us. Where are you tapping in from? Where are you watching from? Are you still watching this game? Are you monitoring the league? Are you getting top? Are you high right now? Do you love this shit? Rasmus Sandin, that long hair does not look good, fella. Dust that off. That, that you know, you're going with the Chaz Michael look there. I, I would say clean it up, fella. That doesn't. That's not your look. You know. Does he usually have hair like that? No, no right? No, no. He, it's probably a little high and tighter, but looks like he's almost got the extends going in terms of. I don't know if he's got an extension guy or. Oh, that's cool. a goal. Holy fuck. Good block, man. H and R block. McFurda has been buzzing tonight. Bobby Domi, Domi looked quick too. Yeah, Domi, he's got, he's, you know, he's hyped up. He's all goofed up on what you say sponsorship deal, Mountain Dew, and he's trying to play like he belongs in that top unit and playing alongside Poppy. Obviously, they've had a good night. Should have had another one, but folks, right now, again, following along, please load up the chat. We have about 120 odd seconds left here in the second frame before we go to. Our second and final intermission break of Hockey Night in Scottsdale. So please get at us in the chat. Connor Timmons, he's edged off along the wall. They get the puck up to Gregor, who sends it up 80 odd feet. And the Washington defenseman able to collect it and send it over to TVR, who double and triple pump fakes. They don't tell us how many people are in here anymore. I know. I don't like that. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. Yeah. Like 8,000 people have tapped in, but like, I want to know how many, usually we're at like, what, 200? Yeah, two, 300, depending on the night. But thank you to everyone that's in here and contributing to the chat, dude. We can't, can't thank you enough. Minute 35 remaining here. Yeah. I've been yelling all night. My fucking throat hurt. Is your throat hurt? Yeah. I did a pod right before this too, but that's just a part of the grind, baby. Uh, I got this new coffee from Scra Sprouts. It's been firing me up. Really? Mm-hmm. Light roast, too. It's weird. I just click the brew, and then uh, I click uh, bold, and the next thing you know, I'm fucking basically driving drunk. As uh, here's, I don't know any player as camp. I don't know any players in the Leafs right now. I can't even see. No, there's uh, a lot of nothing. Anyways, folks, right now, one minute remaining in the second frame is John Tavares collects the puck right along the end wall of his own corner and sends it up to Jake McCabe, plays it back to Tavares. Who makes a little bit of a shimmy shake on TVR before turning away and making an escape route and sending it all the way down below the goal line, high to low, as Bobby McFurda corrals the puck, sends it to Tavares. That shot is wide. Willie Nylander not able to corral the puck. And ultimately, Washington gaining possession before Ave Kubel just turns and fires it and says, get me the fuck off this ice. I'm going to go have a bio steal in between periods and try to regroup. What's your Wi-Fi in here? It won't let me retweet it because my internet doesn't work. Which one is it? It's uh, this one. How do you do that? Why pass? would it kick me off I don't like know. that? How do you share the password for the Wi Fi again? I have no idea. Maybe I'll just retweet it on my lapper. Why would it kick a white man off the internet like that? I don't understand that. Just randomly. They're trying to bring me down. They're trying to bring down Mexican people. Now they're trying to bring down white people. I'm just trying to re retweet this stream because we have a QA session coming up. Oh, what did I say? Oh, did Poppy touch that? He's got to get on the ice. I can't see. Yeah, he is up on the ice. Who talked there? I, I think. Who talked? Uh, no, McCaber. Is that Caber from Eau Claire, Wisconsin? Hit something. Jake McCabe, Captain America, 2012 World Junior Team, 2012, 38th overall pick. Only 13 behind your boys sitting on the couch right now. Jay Swish. As Austin Matthews, wow, nice little high to low cycle. And a little friendly oh, fire hit. right off the breezer ponce of Jake McCabe, who probably gets his fourth or fifth of the year. Is it letting you do it or no? No. I don't know why I did that. Just kick my honky ass off. Where does it like say like show password or whatever? I'm so bad with this shit. You know me. I, I 
sure. you sh should be able to share it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I have sharing turned off. Does anyone in the chat know how to do this? Oh, is that is this the password? Yeah, for this one. Wait, thirteen. All right, Jesus. Yeah, it's not perfect. Press <laughs> rename that. Right. Folks, that is the end of two. Austin Matthews, the NHL leader in goals, the National Hockey League with 57. He is chasing not only greatness, but 70 goals. Speaking of chasing, Alexander Ovechkin inching his way to Gretzky's record only needs 51 more to pass the great one. Folks, right now we're going to go to the second intermission break over here at Hockey Night in Scottsdale. Again, we always appreciate you joining, turning into the boys, tuning into the boys, if you will, live from the couch, just two assholes mucking it up, hanging out with you. So what do we have, people? Where are you at right now? Please get at this chat. Get the chat. I'm tweeting. Get it fucking going. Please get us buzzing. I got to turn it down a little bit in here because I'm starting to sweat. So I'm going to do that. Can't really walk. Folks, bear with us. We have the AC being turned on, and I gotta. Sometimes it's hard for me to fire out tweets while I'm watching the game. Um, but anyway, I'm tweeting about the offside challenge. It's fucking pissing me off. I don't care if it's really offside. What do we got here, folks? Back here, just turning the AC to 66 because my ass is sweating like I'm in Gainesville, Florida at the Swamp in early August watching a SEC matchup and them playing Appalachian State. So, folks, what are we doing tonight? Please get at us. Pierre Engvall is exactly what this team needs. Fucking hammer time. Pure Ingvall got scratched the other night. Patty Waugh said, frankly, I just need more from the big Swedish Frenchman. He's not giving it his all. He's not throwing his body around. He is in Harry Potter at Hogwarts mode, walking around late night in a cloak. Oscar Drunkquist or Mika Zabinajad? Who has the best hair in the National League? I'll tell you who doesn't have the best teeth. That would be Oscar Sunquist. One time, Craig Berube, his coach, our coach at the time, Drunkquist signed a four-year deal. He said, you know what? Sonny just signed a four-year deal. You think with all that money now he could get a new set of teeth. And Craig, I agree. But what a beauty that guy is. Sonny, friend of the show, good dude, throws right. Folks, please get at us in the chat. What are you doing tonight? What's up? Swishy, I got my North Dakota Sioux. Jumper on. I got my Forks hat on. We're in between two here. It's been a decent game tonight. Poppy, that sucks. Should have had a fucking Hattie. They took it away with that offside call. Yes, it was offside. Bertuzzi got to drag the line a little there. Fala, Domi, try to get the sauce in time ultimately. You know what? They go to the Toronto. They go to the iPad. It is what it ain't. So, yo, get at us here, though. Where are we doing, baby? Jordan, I'm sorry. Ricky Leahy, number three. Jordan, I'm sorry for going at you about your Bedard comments earlier this year. I might have been drunk, but you might have been too. Or wrong. Yay. I think both are the case, brother. I mean, I, I don't know exactly what I said. I think it may have been 28 and a half goals. I, I took the under. That was obviously over a 82-game segment. Uh, he's a hell of a player. I think he should wear the bubble all year round because it looks like he's playing with even more confidence with a full face shield. Now, can Bedard wear the full bubble? I have no idea. But, yes, man, what a player. If they get Celebrini, that team could get turned around in a hurry. Curry in a hurry. Chef Curry with the trigger. Tapping in from Jersey, just ate an entire package of Pepperidge Farm chocolate chip cookies. Mike, get those in your barrel. I'll, I, I always say here in Scottsdale, if you can't tone it, tan it, there's nothing wrong with a Michelin car tire strapped around your midsection. Some ladies like a little more cushion for the pushing. <laughs> what about the ladies like me? Because I'm fat and retarded. 
Sea Camper, any blue stories? Uh, I mean, I have a ton. I just, I mean, not a ton. Like I played a thousand games, but yeah, I mean, I have a fair amount of of blue stories. Um, just depends on what you want. I mean, fuck. Steve out one time when I was a black ace. He would walk in our black aces pigeon room during the 2015 2016 season, and one time we went in there, and all of our laundry at least mine and maybe one other player, Ty Raddies, was just in the shower. Just He just turned the showers on and he gets in there. We're about to get dressed for an Aces skate. He goes, he peeks his head in after he gets off the ice. He goes, what's up, you fucking pigeons? <laughs> <laughs> so that was a hilarious one. That one, I mean, Otter's an absolute beauty. I play with him and coach. He was my coach. So I always love that guy. That's just like old school stuff you miss. But yeah, Steve out one time through our our laundry, which you put on, you know, like your long johns, your long shirt under your gear and our shoes in the shower in this like little pigeon referee room as we were about to go on the ice after the team because we couldn't be seen or heard by the team as a black ace. So that was always funny. Otter just poked his head in. No visor, obviously. He just goes, what's up, you fucking pigeons? That's and then, hilarious. So, yeah, that's a good one. So calling the boys pigeons. Uh... I'm tearing, I'm tearing, I'm tearing up a cheesesteak for the boys. I love that. Negroni or espresso martini, obviously the latter. Shout out to espresso martinis. Shout out to last Friday. It was a national espresso martini on your chin day. I had six. Well, I'm tweeting out uh, that we're doing a Q&A. You guys should get Colby Armstrong on the show. He loves you. I love Arm Dog. He seems like a good dude. Throws right and left. Uh, good old Sasky boy. So, yeah, we, we would love to, but he's working on TNT tonight. Joel Edmondson's story seems appropriate tonight in his return to Washington. Eddie, what a beauty. So him and Fabs, Robbie Fabry, they used to live at this place called The Trap. It was The Trap House. It was The address of the place was right on Laclede, right by St. Lawrence University. Or sorry, St. Louis University, right? Like literally right down the street. And it was in between, for people that know St. Louis, it was right between the West End and SLU. So these guys would host these parties at the trap house that would just be all time after games. There'd be so many students in there. And I actually, whenever I would get called up my first two years, I would just go stay with those guys because they had a spare bedroom. So nights at the trap house were always all time. We had a skateboard gang back in the day. We'd skateboard to a bar called Humphreys. It was dollar beer night on Wednesdays, industry night, Thursdays, obviously being ladies night. So those is probably the extent of Edmondson stories I can tell, but he used to have a basketball hoop in his place, and we would just get fucked up and hoop all day. Dude, playing basketball in the pool or in the house, it's so funny. Me and my brother, actually, we used to play pool basketball, and I used to call fouls on him because he would leave his toenails so long. Like, he wouldn't cut his toenails. And he used to drive the uh -huh. lane, and his toenails would cut me in the pool. And I used to call personal fouls on him. I said, go in the house and yeah. cut your fucking toenails. And sometimes before the – before the game, I would have the ref, our friend would come over and be the ref, and I would have him check his toenails for the game. Yeah, check him in. Yeah. So, TSA. Yeah, I mean, don't play pool basketball with long toenails, dude. No. Shout out uh, my brother. It used to do that. I don't know if it was on purpose, if it was strategy, but, uh, man, when that boy drove the paint, and keep in mind, he hit puberty. Somehow, he's younger than me, but he hit puberty like five years before I did, maybe even more. So, it was already hard enough for me to track him down in the paint and, like, play physical and then i got his big ass runescape toenails cutting me it was just a it was really a nightmare his chin peaked before you i've seen a dude cut a guy's eyebrow with his toes on the jujitsu mats fell a snip that shit we are not the ladies yeah it's just a tough look to get hit by a toenail irish car bombs yes or no yes but uh if you drink too many you will be on the toilet irish dan carcillos fighting for <laughs> yeah irish dan carcillos aka car bombs Swish, let me hear your top bars in Madison. Love all the swamp rhinos of the, at the W, personally. Madison, Wisconsin, outside of Toby's Supper Club in McFarland. My number one bar back in the day was Mad Hatters, a.k.a. Hitters Sportsplex. But right now, I mean, how do you argue Mondays? I mean, they the, the drinks they make there, Rob, are legitimately 95 fives in terms of Mike Stiffner's. They pour the chin. Ken Stiffy Juniors. Yes, they, they just – Pour, I mean, just talk about pouring it out, pouring one in. It literally is they fill up a 24-ounce glass of whiskey, and probably 23.5 ounces of that is straight Jameson. So 
Shout out to Madison, Wisconsin. Shout out to the owner there, Mike Gartner. He actually snows in between making drinks. So wait, Mike Gartner? Yeah. Wasn't he? Wasn't he an Islander? Yep. Same name, different dude. Oh, okay. Yep. When is the live show in London, Ontario? Well, we're trying to get a goddamn show in Toronto, but there's just guys. Is it the venues? They want us to pay them, and then they think that they think that people won't come out, and then they're just kind of doubting us. So you know, once again, two white men with their back up against the wall here. I know you have a little tint uh, yep. to you, but. Uh, my honky ass is up against the wall. We're going to do our best to get to Ontario, Canada. But for now, we are in Buffalo next Saturday. Cross the damn border. Come to the damn show. Saturday at the rec room. It's a great pregame ahead of the Leaf Saber game. I mean, yes, why please, not? We're going to put on a clinic. Right. And if, you, if you're in New York, even if you're like somewhere on the East Coast, like it's a little closer. Everything out here is spread out, right? It's like, you know, it's like a girl. It's like sexy red, the stripper. At the local just so cabaret, just so spread out, like your cheeks are everywhere. Now the East Coast, everything's a little closer. Yes, New York is a big state, but if you can get to Buffalo, we will fucking make it up to you. Like you know what I mean? It's gonna be an absolute riot there, guys. We're we're fucking putting on a clinic. Come out to the damn show, Guelph or Waterloo. I've never been to either. Guelph, good university there. Oh, I think I yeah. yeah, yeah you watch a chick from there. I got kicked out of a bar for asking for an Irish car bomb. Guess they just hate to see the white man win. Yeah, I mean, where are you? Are you in San Francisco, San Francisco or Seattle? I, I can see say, that. Where are you, Man Jose? Yeah. You know why they call it Man Jose, right? Dudes whacking dudes. A lot of dudes. It's all dudes in here except for these bitches. I think Babcock is done. <laughs> if Wrenchcock, someone clip this. If Wrenchcock gets another chance, fuck that guy. That guy's a pigeon. Rob, what four checks did I run on my U16 hockey team? Just have F1, F2, and F3 all hit the guy with the puck at the same time. Just just put fear and Just them. hit everything. Heavy hockey. Just run around. Lock it on Boise State. I'm never, ever, 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 ever betting college basketball again. Quick story. It was Duke versus somebody. Duke was like minus 27 and a half. And this fucking kid on the other team hit a pointless three at the buzzer to make them lose by only 26. And I said, well, I'm done betting this fucking sport. I'm done whacking. Fellas, why are players always spitting? Well, I mean, some guys actually chew on the ice. A guy like Eric Carlson legit puts a Swedish snooze top bunk. So he's got to spit. Sometimes he guts. But, I mean, you always got to just like – you know how it is, Rob. You're all congested. You got to clear yeah, your fucking like, throat. Get like, that shit out. It's, like, it's all like mucus and shit, especially if you had a couple of darts the night before. Like, get this shit out of me. Like, I don't even know what's coming through my lungs and on my chin. Like, I just got to spit it out. Yep, we addressed this earlier in the show, but that's all right. We're glad you're here. Uh, yeah, we're trying to see – it's hard when playoffs are around. We're trying to work around it. We're trying to figure it out. Uh, we got Swish on the horn every day trying to make something happen, but – yeah. Women could never be one of the three professions. Nurses, bartenders, or stewardess. What profession can women never be again? And why? Wait, I don't understand this. I don't know. Is that some sort of like riddle? What do you mean? I love when chicks are nurses, bartenders, and stewardess. I, I think they should. I think they should. All of those should be. Is this a riddle? I think are you those from should, San Jose. I was going to say those should. They should only be women. Joe, do you have any plans to rip to Lake Geneva this summer? You know what? I could never afford Lake Geneva growing up, so I was I never grew up on the lake. I was always on the hardwood. I was on the chain nets. I was on a lake. I've actually never been to Lake Geneva, and it's like one of the richer areas in Wisconsin. Oh, I thought that was in Italy. No, it's in Wisconsin. All the sh rich Chicago people come up there, and they have cabins. I've actually never been there. I've heard it's nice. Any live shows coming to Chicago? Guys, again, uh, I appreciate the, the people asking, so don't take this the wrong way. Uh, we're working on it. Yeah. We, you know, we're working on shit. We're trying to get out there. We're trying to. We got Buffalo next week, and then after that, the playoffs are around the corner. So we're just trying to come out. You know, even if we come out and we want to party with the people, that'd be great. Um, live show in Scottsdale. Win. Shout out to Ainsley, who I don't know if she wants me to say this. Ainsley Rose. But she got. Uh, she did me an unbelievable favor and got me into a restaurant that was packed. And uh, really made my mother happy, who was here visiting. Shout out Ainsley, live show in Scottsdale when. Uh, again, same kind of deal. We're trying to get all the logistics together and the back end shit together, blah, 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 blah. We'd love to do one at Scottsdale. We'd love to do one at the DraftKings Sportsbook and up by the quarter. Um, yeah, we'll get there. We'll or, get there, baby. Uh, I don't know if she wants me to say these details, but uh, talk briefly about Putting World. There's a spot up there. But, yeah, ho hopefully, I mean, you know, why the hell not? Anything is possible. You and Gage need to get Kami on live in five. 
Yeah, we do. Mike is a tough guy to track down, but shout out to Kami. Shout out to one of the bigger legends, UND legends of all time, my friend. Uh, are the Sabres a playoff team next year? <laughs> I mean, who the fuck knows? We've been saying that for fucking six years. I've been I've been fucking saying that since I learned how to look at the TV. Yeah, I, I mean, this fucking team. It's con- listen. Back in the day, they had Michael Pekka, Dominic Kasich. They had. Danny Brio, Brio. I think it was kid. Tom McVanek in the bumper spot. Oh, Tom McVanek. Yeah, just Derek doing Roy, low. too. Derek Roy. Was filth. Filthy. I mean. Uh, Pominville. Pominville. Who's, who's the other righty that was sick? Tim Connolly? Tim Furda. He was Astronaut so mince. juice. Astronaut mince. Oh, my God. He had the best hands in the he world. He was so sick. He had the best hands in the world. Tim Furda Connolly was so juice. Tapping in from Kalamazoo, yes, Michigan. Yes, that's Tito's sick. Tito's kind of nice. That is such a Michigan drink. I mean, Kalamazoo hey, is so nails. I mean, you guys don't have clean water. You might as well drink some Tito's have you ever been tea. To, have you ever been to Kalamazoo? I've never been to Michigan. Oh, my God. Kalamazoo is so nails. Shout out to Western Michigan. Shout out to a little bit of trim. Who drinks more, Swish or Nikki Furda? I mean, Nikki Furda is still, you know, trying to, trying to, you know, make shit happen in the league. Right. Uh, can't just always tip back the booze unless you want to shorten your career, you know? Yeah. Well, what the fuck do I know? I didn't play in the NHL. I'm just a dumbass on the couch. Thoughts on the Devils. Just an absolute shit show of a season for the New One Jersey of the Devils. most random moves at the deadline, and I love this guy, and he's a friend of the show, but going after Shaky Allen. You know, getting yeah. Jakey Allen back in the mix. I mean, I hope that was a move to get Jakey Allen another contract there going into the next year. But Tom Fitzgerald, it was just a little too late, a little too low and slow, and they've kind of seen that season slip away from him. Uh, opinions on Casey Middlestat. You know what, man? I don't watch him enough. I don't love his game, if I'm being honest. It's just kind of like, uh, okay, it's don't be- take this the wrong way because Zegris is a friend of the show, kind of. He's like a Zegris. He, I want, he's a guy that is a good player on a bad team. He has really good skill. I think he gets a lot of cookies on the power play. He's highly talented. My question to him and his chin is, can he play that second-line role when the chips are all in, Johnny Chan, and you're playing against a heavy centerman on Vegas, you know? Mm. Against Edmonton, can great, you, right? Pressure, man. You know, can you can that guy? Does he does he have enough sandpaper to his game? I don't know that answer. And I think a guy like him needs to go out and just get in a bar fight, just knock somebody the fuck out for no reason. You know what I mean? And like, yeah. yes, you will get arrested. Yes, it will be bad press. But at the end of the day, put that chip on your shoulder. Yeah, it'll help your game. Yeah, put that Tostito right on your shoulder. Did the Caps actually make the playoffs? Shout out to Michael Sullivan, always in the chat. Appreciate you, fella. Did the Caps actually make the playoffs? They have a game in hand against Detroit. I, not. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like it. Swish. No, I mean, I, I mean, but who knows? Like the, these Eastern Conference team dying to get in. There, nobody knows because they lose every night. <laughs> like, who knows? Nobody wants to get in. Nobody wants to win. Jordo, did you ever play against Ribeiro? Was he a big dickhead as everyone thinks? Played against him in the National, and I've actually played against him when he got sent down to Milwaukee from Nashville, and it was the funniest thing ever. He soaked the fine both times we played him and went no bucket warm-up. It's like a 10K fine, maybe yeah. 5K, and he would just go no bucket, tongues out. He would just hammer bubble gum on the red line. I think he took like two strides and got off. Yep. Mike Snow Ribeiro. Tap it in for North Bay, Ontario. Thoughts on the Sens' future? How long will they be in cup contention? I think realistically they could be in cup contention by maybe 2060. Yeah, I was going to say 59 maybe. like Maybe in 40 years? I have no idea. 40? They have a lot of weird contracts there. They just every, Anytime you play over 100 games there, you get eight by eight. So that guy like Josh Norris is going to be hurt for a while. They have a guy, you know, sideline. They're, they're going to make a big move in the summer management. They need a new coach because Jock Lemaire might die on the bench at any day. He's on life alert. Like, there's so many questions there that they – I don't even think they have any idea what they're going to do. So I think to simplify the things there, what they can, and then I don't know. Like, just try to shake it up. Who fucking knows? Raymond Wings MVP. Uh, we're gonna get to, we're gonna get uh, pour one out for Sabalenka tonight. Yeah, just bizarre news. Sabalenka plays tomorrow. Uh, just just like horrific. Obviously, a lot of bad news this week in the sports world. You hate to see that. Yeah, you do. Um, thoughts on Patty Maroon to the bees. Last one before we uh, get back to the game here. Um, 
yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. It's just the Bruins being the Bruins. They pick up a guy here. They pick up a guy there. You know, they, you know. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be coming off back surgery, David Backus surgery with that L4, L5 lumbar surgery. Now, can he come back and play right away? Who knows? He is skating, I'm told. Will he be healthy enough for playoffs and a good Patty Maroon, a serviceable Patty Maroon? I think he will be because he's a fucking nail gun, but we'll see. That's a move that, you know, Lucic comes out of the lineup. What do you replace him with? Well, the next best thing. Patty Maroon, similar player. Obviously, Lucic a little bit tougher. Patty Maroon, probably better hands and three-time mug winner. So that just seems like it was a chin for a chin move, and they needed a big heavy left winger on their fourth line, and they went and got their guy that was, you know, basically a, an almost a clone of what they've missed in Lucic. Yeah, I mean, I think the Bruins, they wouldn't have brought him in if they didn't do their homework. I mean, the Bruins, they always do their homework besides when it came to Mitch Miller. Uh, that was a mulligan. That's a Mitch Mulligan Miller uh, mistake on their end. Um, but yeah, I think, I think they wouldn't have brought him in if they didn't think he could be serviceable anyway. Yeah. Back to the game here, folks. Again, if you're following along, we have four, two in favor of the Toronto Maple Leafs. We're two assholes that are 32 and 30 years old, sitting on a couch without a contract from anyone commentating on a game for you, the people, because this is what we do, baby. We love the sport. We're going to have a penalty coming up here, Rob. Toronto Maple Leafs leading the Washington Capitals 4-2 with 18.50 to play. Shots in favor of the Buds, 22-17. to And we get a slashing penalty and or a hook on Alexander Ovechkin oh. as the Maple Leafs will be going to the power play. And Ovi's in disbelief. He can't believe it. But, hey, you can't do that. Even if you chirp the ref, you still go sit for two minutes. And you feel shame because that is the rule and that is the name of the game. Even if you have yellow laces and you're going to be the number one goal scorer in all of hockey someday yeah i mean that's just a tough penalty to take you know you're two minutes into the first you're about a minute into the first they got a clean sheet for a power play and look austin austin matthews he's gonna be looking for the hat trick i mean they already took away a goal from him because he's mexican and now the puck doesn't lie swish i could see him getting his third right here right now yeah, we get a look at the first unit as Joseph Wall, Joseph Stalin Wall, sets up the puck for a young Timothy Lilligren out of Stockholm, Sweden. He sends the puck back and tries to run a drop play, but it is intercepted by Nick Dowd with a good stick. Ultimately, he sends it back to Willie Styles Nylander in a great little redirection one-touch pass from 34 as Dowd almost sprung himself for a little bit of a B-way, but he skates like he's in quicksand, so I think they would have been okay. Right now, again, if you're following along, 131 remaining in the power play, Gucci. I'm gonna I'm gonna address this real quick, Swish. Uh, we are gonna do a Coyotes all cast. However, we won't have the TV rights because your boy got canceled. Um, you know, I had a tweet that was completely taken out of context. You know, part of it was my fault because I tweeted a picture without knowing the background of the picture. Um, unfortunately, there's people out there that want to cancel people and. Uh, the girl tried to cancel me. The tweet got like a million views and they fired me basically from the job because they said they don't want to work with me over it. Even though the context of the tweet was completely lied about. And I tweet way worse shit than that. Uh, yeah, anyways, it is what it that's is. what happened. Just trying to bring Gucci down as wow. 34 was able to uncork one there and just wasn't able to find a corner. But he is stepping into the circle against Nikki Sticky Dowd, who's historically... Very good in the face-off circle, clicking in and around 58% career as Timothy Lilligren corrals the puck. He sends it back to Willie Nylander and Austin Matthews, setting up for the drop breakout as they try to finagle their way in to the diamond penalty kill. I'm going to switch. I know I addressed this before, but I just like telling my side of things for the people that are actually in here watching, which we really appreciate. Yep. So I feel like you deserve to know what happened. Uh, Drew Miller, I'm going to answer that at the next whistle because I don't want to be blabbing along during the game. So, Yeah, once this power play goes, we'll get at that. Folks, right now, Austin Matthews getting a live look at his power play totals. 15 goals on the man advantage along with 10 assists. That is good for 25 points. And there's even a guy that went to North Dakota for three years and failed out almost his freshman year. I can do that easy math. Right That's now, right. we are looking at the second power play unit of the Toronto Maple Leafs as Nick Robertson sends it over to Morgan Riley. It's crazy that Morgan Riley's in the second unit. I mean, I I don't love that. You know, I, I know Timothy Lilligren is Sheldon Keefe's boy. They came up through the minors. I was with them in with the Marlies, but Morgan Riley to me 
is a better power play quarterback than Timothy Lilligren at yeah, this stage of his career. He's done it. He's had 70 points. He's still the number one defensive for the team. I think that is probably not the right play. But if you're looking at terms of hands, it's always nice having a righty up there, fella, especially when you have 34 on his flanker side because then that is a one tee back up to Lilligren. So I know it comes down to hands a lot of the times, but to me, I really like when Riley's up there regardless. Just what's because. Your, what's he, your take on Nick Ferda Robertson? You know what? He – I haven't the, – the jury is still out on him. Like what is he? You know, like is he a serviceable – third liner or can he play top six or is he you know can he play a full season is, is my question because he hasn't done it yet has he gotten a chance to do it no but at the same time I think it's still fair to say that the the jury is still out of what he can be as a player I don't know what he is I, I can't figure out he's he's not the smartest guy okay but he's very fast he can be electric at times he plays with a lot of pace he is a good skater so what is he is he just an up and down kind of buzzsaw winger is he uh, uh does he have the smarts as of a Trevor Moore when he came when he was in Toronto and didn't really get a look and he played fourth line and then he went to another organization? Now he's leading the team in goals. I, I don't know what he is. I, I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah, I'm not sure. But look, uh, 17 shots, not going to get it done for the Capitals. Start shooting that thing. Go full Rittenhouse. Just start shooting that puck on net. Get it deep. I mean, you guys are down four to two every game. Shoot, shoot this. Dude, I swear to God, Sandine, no disrespect. I know just I'm an asshole on the couch. Oh, that's a problem. Oh, that's going to be a trip. I mean, dude, but Sandine has to get that in the corner or get it on that, dude. Why I'm, I'm is, sorry. I know I'm an asshole on the couch. I'm sorry. Well, tonight he's playing against his old team, and he's playing like he's Robert Gordon Nor. But like, he's playing like he's in a roller hockey game in Laguna Beach, California. Like, yes, get the puck right. on that. You guys are down two goals. It's like he's playing on alongside Chucky e. Slick. Do you think that's a weak penalty right there? No, that's a penalty. You can't do that. Because you can't come down no, on the guy, can't. right? Pause. I mean, I mean, he would have had an odd man break or at least a one-on-one. -on -one. He took away all of his rights. You what know? a block. Oh, that's – how does it not break your hand? He went full Rosa Parks, took away the rights. Ooh. That's got to break your hand. Soak City, Utah there. That's got to feel a little bit stiff, especially in the morning there, fella. How does that not break your hand? If that's me, my hand is shattering into a million pieces. We're going to get another look here at the Maple Leafs number one unit as Timothy Lilligren will go back to corral the puck from his teammate and netminder, Joseph Wall. Joseph Stalin Wall. Lilligren grabs it carefully, surveys his options. He knows the drop's going to be coming as he dishes it off to Tyler Bertuzzi and ultimately a linesman is in the way. But Willie Nylander is able to corral the puck, kick it out to Austin Matthews, and hopefully they will be able to get set up. Nice little play there by Tavares to protect the puck. Get it up to the top of the key, but Washington able to send it 200 feet, and we will try again on the power play breakout. Right, right now, Lilgren, he, he's getting rattled by the, the F1 of the diamond for the Washington Capitals. Now he's dropping it a little bit too early. Okay, that was a better play there, but the last two attempts weren't perfect. And that's where I think Morgan Riley is so much better, is how good he is at dicing up a forecheck. He skates a little better, so he can come out with more steam, which ultimately backs up the other team's penalty killers. Right now, that drop pass, he's dropping it so early, he's not giving his flankers and styles and 34 any time to get their feet going. So that's where I think Riley is just so much better is he's just – he's unbelievable on the breakout. Like, he's just so smart. He's cerebral. He's older. He's got way more games. I don't know, Gucci. Maybe I'm just – Flanker? Know, I, I barely even know her. What do you think about the trapezoid? I forgot that was even there. Stupid. Yeah, it is fucking stupid <laughs> as hell. Yeah. All right, folks, 14.07 remaining. If you're watching the game with us, we are at 14.04, 14.03. We've got about 20 seconds to see if they can extend the lead here. Yep, nice little little shot there from Riley, just trying to get anything. Anytime you're on a second unit, man, you wanna, you're you going to get about 40 seconds, and it's probably going to be when the other your guys are changing because if they're set up, they're not getting off the ice. So usually you have to strike quick, and I like that quick shot from Riley. Yes, he missed the net. But it's a good attempt to at least maybe get one on net, get a tip, because you know as a second unit you're not going to get a lot of time to make something happen. So good play there, headsy play by Riley. Yes, it missed the net by two feet, but I like to play the quick strike. That's too many. Well, oh, Vetchkin had his hand up like he was a goddamn linesman. Oh, oh my, oh my God. God. That was so sick. I was about to get so rattled that he held up like that, but that's you why I'm not where, in the NHL. Did you see where Strom <laughs> held up? He literally had a one-on-one -on -one with Wall, and he elected to kick it out to Ovechkin, who 
had to get a seeing eye shot through. Yeah, I mean, Ovechkin is just an absolute freak. The Buddy, Capitals are back in this fucking. We game. need to we need to get a picture of that freeze frame. That was unbelievable. Watch this, dude. I was about to be I was about to be a shoot it guy for a second. That's one, two, three. That's eighteen players on the ice for the Leafs. It doesn't matter. The ball does not lie. Dylan Strom just going full. What was there too? Right? Ah, no, he wasn't. I mean, I think he was just so confused, man. Like he's all alone. Yes. Like the even the defenseman is shading towards Ovechkin. That was crazy. I mean, we have a game here, man. I mean, the desperation, they need to be desperate. That's hilarious. Still passing it to Ovechkin. I want to tweet that. I got to tweet this. That was DMV. That was so sick. I got a tweet. Sorry. I always go silent after goals happen. Uh, a yard. Folks, again, sorry, we're just getting a couple tweets here. Rasmus Sandin tried to dangle again. You just missed it. I, why is he not benched? I have no idea. But right now, again, if you're following along, we have a one-goal hockey game. Actually been pretty entertaining to this point. 4-3. Shots in favor of the Toronto Maple Leafs. But right now, I would say it's anyone's game. Folks, load up the chat, please. Let us know where you're watching from. Again, we will be going to commercial at the next whistle as long as it is not a goal and or a fight. So please get at us here in the chat. Let us know what you're doing, how you're doing, where are you watching from tonight? Eastern Conference Showdown. Every goddamn point matters for the Washington Capitals, and tonight they need two, but they trail by one with 12.07 remaining in the game as Willie Styles dancing like he's, oh, my filth. That was just so sick how Willie Styles carved up that neutral zone, man. What a fucking computer on this guy's brain. Just when you think the Caps are getting back in the game, like this is why the Capitals aren't going to make the playoffs with all due respect. You got to dial in. You get close. You can't give one up. I get it. You got to play a little bit more risky so you can have some offense. But, oh, that's a tough one to let in. But what a dish. What a dish. That is just an absolute surf and turf in goddamn – Boca Raton on the ocean kind of dish right there. Maybe a little wine. Maybe you get a little drunk. Maybe start hitting on somebody's wife. But that puck's got to be saved. Ovechkin is absolutely rattled. He's like, what else can I do, boys? I'm 55 years old. Holy shit. 11.54 remaining in the tilt here. We have a 5-3 game. The over is hit. Use code Heat Daddy on prize picks for a 100% deposit boner. Uh, it's a free 100 bucks on prize picks. And uh, yeah, Cal that was sick by Willie Styles there. Like, just talk about a guy that just absolutely just diced up a fucking neutral zone, a defensive core. I mean, that thing was straight out of a fruit ninja. He put them right in the blender, folks, turbo and sport mode, like you're in the Hellcat. Oh, what a pass by 34. Oh, oh my God. So rattled. Dude, that pass by 34. Watch this pass to Placanic. Like, can we get Bertuzzi? Bertuzzi looks like he's going on a ski trip right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, what are you like doing, 70s. dude? Okay, I can't chirp the neck guard. But anyways, what a pass by 34. If you you break this down, Chucky Lindgren. Okay, he deflects it. McFurda, turnover. There it is. Domi, good stick, good skate. So I just, look at that pass by 34. And then backhand, forehand to Bertuzzi. Watch this pass by 34. Look at this. Are you fucking kidding me? Look at that pass. I mean, under the stick and then away from Ovechkin, the stretching Ovechkin, who actually went into a deep lunge there, and then Bertuzzi getting it under the bar over the blocker hand of Chucky Lindgren from Lakeville, Minnesota. That is hockey porn. That is like watching Johnny Sins tee off on a young Lisa Ann back both in their prime <laughs> with the Golden Wrench Award at the Adult Film Star Awards held every year June 5th to the 6th in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Spearmint Rhino. What a goddamn pass. Folks, again, if they don't score and there's no fight, the next whistle, we will be going to commercial break. Max Domi with four assists tonight, my friend. He's playing on the top line. Is he really? He's looked really good tonight. Yes, he's been buzzing. Sandine, again, trying to make too much happen. Sandine, you got the new contract. Just be rest with Sandine. You're not Eric Carlson. You're not. Just be Sandine. 
you're playing against your former team. We don't need, I love you, kid, but simplify the game. If I'm your agent, Michael Nylander, I'm calling you right now and I'm saying, hey, buddy, just relax out there. Have some fun. I've been in the same spot on the ice. Hey, Swish, do less. You're not that good. And we're going to have a penalty. Are we back? Are we back? Hello? Are we back? Are you going to the movies later? Are we back? Oh, we're back. Oh, we're back. Fuck, I was going to describe my uh, cancel story, but I guess that'll have to wait. Uh, did you send me a link? Which... Oh, yeah. Or can you read them over there? We can, but do you want to... Do you want... I'll just send you it. Doesn't matter to me. Next time, cranks. Folks, right now again, we are back. Sorry, we always have technical. Laptop died. Technical stuff happens to the boys, but we keep on moving. Rolling, rolling. Right, we're back. Rolling on the river. Back to the game. Hopefully, Poppy can get his hat trick. He had an absolute beauty of a pass there. Austin Matthews, 34. What a chin. What a guy. Man, that was a juicy pass. We got another look at the number one unit. Of the Toronto Maple Leafs, the boys are going to really try to put this one out of reach. Again, if you are following along, we thank you so much for tuning in with the fellas over at Hockey Night Scott. So my favorite night of the week, our favorite night of the week. We love you, the people. Seriously, we do. This is why we do it. We do it for the folks. Uh, mute. We good? Yeah, we should be good. Okay. I muted it. Wait, what? That's it. We're not muted. No, I'm saying I muted mine. Someone in the chat said muted. Yo, are we muted? Hello, hello, hello. Folks, again, we're watching this game right now. Are we muted? Are we, are we good? Should be good. We back? Chat, get at us. Chat, are we back? 93-1, Bobby Gucci. We are back for Darren. Not muted. Nice. Okay, cool. All right. Getting a look again at the second unit coming up. You always get about 40 seconds. The thing about being on a second unit, I've been there. You just get a little depressed because, like, why can't we get a start? But then you realize there's 50, 60 million on the first unit, and you're like, well, yeah, that's probably why. And I'm not one of those guys. I'm making 700. So, yes, the second unit, they are important, but your time, it is so precious. You're going to get 30 seconds. You might get 20. You need to get one shot at least. And the Leafs, their second unit tonight, you know what? Not perfect, but they haven't had a whole lot of looks. And again, right now, they don't need them to be buzzing, but you really would put this game out of reach, out of Jack Reacher, if you scored one more to make it 7-3. Right now, folks, if you're following along, again, as Ovechkin got out of the box with his second penalty of the game, we have 8-15 remaining in the third frame. The final – oh, oh, we almost had a toy there. He, he's, not, he's not happy to watch, too. Yeah, he is. Shots right now of the Maple Leafs, the Buds, the away team leading the way with 27 
Washington Capitals, 18 as Tom Wilson kind of cuts it up a little bit. Oh, my God, that was a sick play. Who is that? A stromer. And Gregor with a head of steam and a head of a chin, he challenges Rasmus Sandin, but ultimately gets flattened into the end well by Tom Wilson. And Tom Wilson is doing Tom Wilson things here, Rob. Takes a high stick on Gregor. He ultimately wraps him up like a goddamn gordita. And now the referee is going to check if that is a two-minute violation or we're just going to stick with the minor or a double minor. I think it's just going to be two, no blood, no foul. But we're looking at Austin Matthews here. Had a chance. Oh! Off of Tommy Wilson's inside boot. But look at Wilson here. Holy wreck. Dude, you got to you gotta watch your wrench. You can't just be whacking guys like that. Like you're fucking Johnny on the corner living in Brooklyn. Folks, we're at a final <laughs> commercial break. There might be one more. But please, load it up in the chat. What are you doing tonight, baby? How are we doing? It is industry night. It is not ladies' night. Ladies' night is tomorrow. What are we doing? We're going to go grab something to eat after this, folks. But we want to know, more importantly, what the hell you're doing. I'm drinking an Americano right now. My chin. Not cool. I, I do that. Yeah. Americano on your chin. All right. Hold on. I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to let people know why I got banned from the broadcast really quickly because I said it on Twitter, but I didn't want to draw more attention to it. First thing, we are going to work with the Coyotes and do some sort of alt cast. However, for the time being, we can't use the TV rights anymore because we were supposed to do the TV rights. It was going to be full Manning cast style, yada, yada, yada. I had a tweet. And everybody knows I tweet about this. In two weeks, we can flatten this curve in two weeks because I'm mocking what they were telling us. And COVID was like three years. So I say, we can flatten the curve in two weeks. I tweeted a picture of people wearing masks, which is my fault. I take accountability for that. I didn't know the context of why they were wearing the masks. It turns out one of them had a medical issue. Somebody on the internet screenshotted my tweet, screenshotted their medical diagnosis, which I didn't know. When I found out, I obviously deleted the tweet again. I'm accountable for tweeting a picture of somebody I didn't know. My tweet was all about the joke of flattening the curve. It wasn't about the people at all. I would never do that. Anyway, the girl that tweeted uh, my tweet and their medical situation made it out to look like I was mocking people that have a horrible disease, which I would never do. That shit has been in my family. I told the line, but I would never joke about that, obviously. Anyway, I got like a million views and uh, the people that own the rights to the network were like, we're not working with you. So uh, I find it a little weird that out of all the tweets that they're going to fire me over, it's that one, which is one that got spun out of context. And basically, uh, you know, uh, that's not what I meant. Obviously, I deleted it. I explained my side of it. But yeah, unfortunately, we're not going to have that opportunity um, on the broadcast this year. I figure that they cancel me over saying that I'm doing co t cocaine off tits, but fortunately, um, that's what happened. So yeah, that's literally what happened. Uh, and it also bothers me that, and this is the last thing I'll say, Switch. I know yeah. we're in the middle of a game. The same, the same girl that made it out to be like I was making fun of people with a with a uh, horrible medical situation. Later in the night, tweeted oh if i knew it was this easy to cancel people i do i do it more often or something like that which like just goes to show internet success pools shit happens it's my fault i tweeted the picture i obviously didn't know the medical diagnosis of people in the picture once i found out i deleted it but yeah that's the whole that's reason bullshit. yeah it's bullshit it's they bullshit. won't they won't let me on the broadcast over it uh it happens you know Le lesson learned um it's a but yeah it's, just, it's a tough bounce but you know what rob over here at hockey night scottsdale the show goes on, brother. Yeah, I mean, it's it crazy. Is, it is what it ain't. It's crazy to it think. No one stopped us. No, no one stopped us. It's crazy to think that uh, people, like, even some hockey media people were like, oh, like, this guy, I can't believe he's making fun of people that have this medical term, like, cancer or whatever it is. Like, I would never fucking do that. <laughs> Ever. No. Like, that's like, out of all the shit I tweet, I, I would never do that. Uh, like you're I said, not. my family has been directly affected by shit like that, as a lot of people. Well, you're not a master. Yeah, but, you know, people don't know me. It's, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. But anyway, Swiss, we're going to bounce back. We'll be fine. Um, but, yeah, if you're going to not let me on TV, you should probably 
not let me on TV because of something that I actually say, not like a fake made up blown out of context tweet. But anyway, Switch, that was the summed up version of it. Thanks to everyone. Everything is for clicks these days, folks. And unfortunately, that one got taken directly out of context and it affected the boys over here. But like I said, that ain't stopping, baby. The show goes on. So back to the game here. Tommy Wilson took a four minute double minor rob. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that was a tough little play there by Wilson, I will say. I want to comment on this one here. Raymond Butterfield Swish, why did you call her a career so young? Was it injuries or did you decide to commit to hockey night in Scottsdale full time? Honestly, brother, I had a, a really bad concussion last year. I was playing in Switzerland. My jaw got put on the ice. I was actually a little, little stung, a little half knocked out. I tried to come back and play a couple times. I kept getting symptoms. Every time I came back, I would get fucking dizzy. I was feeling fucked up. I've had a few in my day, and I was at a crossroads. And you know what? I took my talents to hockey night in Scottsdale, and now I'm sitting here on a goddamn couch my own place with a full suit jumper on. I'm going to hockey for you, the people, with my boy, Bobby Gucci. So short story long, keep drinking. And uh, <clears throat> Switch, this game, you know, is shaping up to be exciting. But it just uh, – watching it let it run away from him. And uh, now we have a 6-3 game. There's five minutes left. There's really no hope left. I hate to say that because you never know what can happen. But, you know, Toronto's going to have a power play until the four minutes mark. And, um, yeah, this sucks for Washington. I mean, uh, yeah. It's this I don't know what else to much, say. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much sayonara, right? We got a minute 20, minutes 15 left in this power play. Washington down a field goal. Obviously, you can't kick in hockey. That is against the rule. So, right now, I mean, 450 left. Washington's gonna have about three odd minutes by the time Tommy Wilson gets out of the box. And I think that's to me all she wrote in terms of you don't even pull your goalie at that point if you're Spencer Carberry because you're down three. Yeah. Why would you pull the goalie? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, really, you need the points, but you're not gonna score three. So this is one of those games like in the association, the NBA, where you usually pull the starters, you get the boys a rest, you start playing the bottom three lines, the bottom two lines. You know, the, the top D, Morgan Riley's probably going to get one more ship if that his day is done. Simon Benoit, they go, we'll play for the next three minutes. We'll take a graveyard ship. Uh, this is all she wrote. Poppy's going to get off the ice after, you know, you know probably this next ship, and he won't, he'll shut her down and untie the skate. So Maple Leafs with a, with a hell of a push. I mean, just when you thought Obi had the boys back in it, two quick ones from the Leafs. Next thing you know, it's 6-3. Next thing you know, it's 7-3, seven, seven, three, three, and I think that is four or five points. Well, it's four at least for Poppy. It might be five. It's fucking point night at the Verizon Center. Jesus. That's such a Tavares goal this year. You know, get the seventh goal in a game and, like, still, like, hovering around a point a game. I like that he can go through the choo-choo train. Is that a point? Yeah, that's not point. Yeah, I mean, just a uh, – I don't even know what to make of it for Washington right now. I mean, like – is it a pathetic performance? I think Lingren kind of got hung out to dry, but then again, he did need to make a couple saves. Like, yeah, I mean, what are you, what are you going to do here? Like, you know, you you probably got to make this save, but at this point, yeah, what gotta, are we doing? You got to get out in your paint, right? I mean, the game over. Of paint, waka flaka. We got three odd minutes left here, folks. Let, we'll we'll take some questions though. I mean, the game is pretty much wrapped up, but please ask us any questions, any cities you'd like us appear or pop into during the playoff. We always like you know hearing from the people. We like scouting out our demographics, seeing where people are at. So, again, if you're watching along with the fellas and you have a Twitter account, you have the Instagram app, send us a picture of your screen of us, you watching us in the chat, and then also the game. We love retweeting that. It makes our day. So, please, that is always appreciated. Hockey Night Scottsdale coverage you can't find anywhere else. Send it on Instagram. Instagram. No, you can't. Send it on Instagram, too. Yeah, send it on IG. I hate how they do a commercial when the game's just fucking over. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, the game's over. Just stop with the commercials. This yeah. episode's brought to you by Prize Picks, Butter Golf, Heat Daddy Merch, Hard Mountain Dew. Hard Piss. I hate people that sell out and advertise shit, but stop with the commercials. Folks, again, low and slow. This is a good question. Here. It is Wednesday night. Yep. What do we got? Quick question. What sport would you have played other than puck? I would have moved for sure, man. I can still get you 10 in the core in the association. Put me in the game. 10 uh, minutes, I'm a microwave. I would absolutely love to start tennis as a kid or stuck with baseball. Yeah. Well, that, that's mine. Baseball, I mean, you just make racks. 
Yeah, you make racks. I mean, you got to battle in the minors, but if you can get through the minors, especially you could still make it to the NBA. Wearing that jumpsuit, you probably could. Dude, I'm telling you right now, I've never, <laughs> seen, I've never seen a shot I don't like. It's like, just give me, I'm a microwave. I'm, get the I'm guy gonna, the rock. Am I going to make the shot? I have no idea. But you give me a back, I'm shooting again. Thank you, Camper, for stopping by. We appreciate it. Thank you to all you guys that fired up the chat today. Really good chat today. It started off slow, but you guys picked it up, man. We're honestly we're planning on maybe taking a break in the intermissions because it's hard to talk for two and a half hours straight. But questions were good today. Um, you know, I feel like we're both buzzing. Swish, where did you get that jumpsuit? My uncle, my redneck uncle, shout out to Clint Borby, made this for me. He went to a jumpsuit guy and fully put the all the patches on. So he got this <laughs> velour uh Whatever it's like velour, but like what is what is the other material called? It's like uh I have no idea. It's velour, but it's something else. It's like a blend, and then he, he put all the patches on the UND patches, put 24 on it. I mean, it's just sick, fella. Yeah. Uh RIP to Chris Simon, man. It's it's uh it's absolutely brutal, man. Yeah. So I don't even know what to say. It just, yeah, it just sucks. You're chucking them both ways and you know, getting a bad spot and PD says, PD says best casino story. I would have to say when I lost a ton of money on an NBA game, and then right away I put a hundred on roulette and hit for thirty five hundred. And right before I put the chip down, I have a witness too that was there with me. That guy goes, "You want a hundred on the chip?" And I did sixteen for Mitch Marner. And he goes, "Huh, not my money." The guy was a dickhead. Like, <laughs> oh, that's the first time you've seen a hundred dollars on a <laughs> right. blackjack uh, on a roulette number. And what do you and it hit? It was the only time I ever did that. Was it here or Vegas? It was in Vegas. Love that. Um, other than that, I've had a ton of degenerate casino stories. I, I yeah, I mean it's the felt, right? Like you're yeah, you're gonna max out that card one way or the other. I have a kind of a funny casino story. Um, I was by myself at the Cosmo playing blackjack, and I had a twenty, and I was joking around with the guy. I said I wanted to hit. And he's like, don't hit. And I'm like, I want to hit. I was so pissed drunk. I wanted an ace for 21. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do it. He talked me out of it. But he pulled it hypothetically. And it was a fucking ace. Wow. Could you imagine? Shut up. I know. It's a total asshole play. He was like laughing about it. He's like, dude, just don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Could you imagine? That would have been like, what are the chances of that? That would have been maybe the most nails thing I've ever heard. Folks, yeah. right now, again, we don't have much of the game left. But we do appreciate you, the people, for tuning in. Rob, how many people total have we had tonight? Somewhere around 15 or so? I don't know if this counts Twitch and YouTube, but on we have 13,592. Nice. That's a solid amount, folks. Yeah. Raymond Butterfield wants to know Gucci's drunkest night of his life. I think I know the answer, but maybe we hear from the man himself. No, I actually... Uh, man, there's too many to count. Like, there's literally thousands. But I was gonna say Swish. I was gonna say the uh, the the um the vodka bomb night where uh, I was at my buddy's house and I did. I was doing a Jaeger bomb and I dropped it into a cup of vodka. I forget the name we were calling it, but it's absolutely disgusting. I mean, think about that. You're right. dropping a shot of Jaeger into a cup of vodka. I drank the whole thing. Well, I saw you do Jaeger tequila earlier this year. That yeah, that's sick. disgusting. I went to the window. I pulled the window up. I started puking directly out the window. And then his dad was in the room two floors up. And he's like, what the fuck's going on? But the vodka bomb was up there. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, this weekend I lost my car keys. I still don't have them. Right. Lost my office keys. I lost everything. It's pretty much every night. I can go on and on. But anyway, yeah, I'm a, I don't know. Yeah, I should have been standing there. Anyways, folks, right now, 104 left. That is 64 seconds. Neil Yakupov, if you will. The guy that scored a overtime winner and celebrated to the practice ring at the <laughs> Rogers Place Arena. Again, we thank you, the people, for tuning in as we have 64 odd seconds left. We get a look at Sheldon Keefe. The Capitals now looking on the outside in of the Eastern Conference wild card race. The Lightning with a commanding lead, not really though, with 80 points. The Red Wings with 76, and the Capitals with 75. Uh, a lot of people asking about my boozing, which is a bad time to ask because there's a minute left. That I could talk about, I could do a whole series on this, but no, I don't get anxiety. Uh, it's just a rare disease I have where I don't get anxiety and it's honestly detrimental. Maybe I'll stop drinking if I did, but I just don't, I just, I live in the present. Uh, that's what it's all about. Swish best spot to find some over 40 Larry birds in the scout. Oh, I would say, well, 
up in kind of my neck of the woods. Rooster Tavern's a good spot. If you go over to the DC Ranch, a sneaky spot over there is the living room. Uh, Cougar Bar, really good spot. I would say th- start at those two spots. Work your way around North Scottsdale because that's a lot of the time where the divorcees are hanging out. Even a place over at the, uh, it's over, what is it called? Greyhawk, sorry. Talk much. It's, uh, what's the spot at uh, Greyhawk called? The Martini? No. It's, uh, Lu- it's not Lucy's. It's, uh, I don't know. The wine, the wine, it's the really, wine lounge. No, it's a. Uh, I'm I'm blanking on the spot, but the the bar literally right at the course of Isabella's. Oh, oh. confirmed. Right at Greyhawk, Isabella's is a great cougar bar. So start at those three. Sorry, boys, I was mid train of thought. Train roll on, drops of Jupiter train. Anyways, Robbie Gucci, Jay Swish, the she fellas, Isabella. Ainley, yes, Isabella's great John Cougar bar over there. So. Those three spots are good spots if you like older women. I like them anywhere, mean, lean, and in between. So get at me, ladies. Gucci, that is all we have over here from the couch. That was two and a half hours of straight work for the boys, for the people. I love you all. Yep. Thanks, guys. Everyone, thanks for tuning in, commenting. We appreciate it. Uh, sorry if you're a Cap fan. It's absolutely brutal. We will see you next week. That was Hockey Night Scottsdale. We out.